praise the Lord, praise the Lord, hallelujah. May peace be unto you, Justine, Alushan, and Drex. Peace be unto you, brother. Good to see you. So we're going to start this stream off, and I'm going to get straight into it. We're going to be talking about Muslims and Allah and Muhammad. How Ramadan goes against Jesus Christ's teachings. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So we're going to start off and tell y'all and show y'all with the scriptures how Ramadan, Prophet Muhammad that created Islam, goes against Jesus teachings let's go into Genesis chapter 20 verse 17 Genesis chapter 20 verse 17 so Abraham prayed unto God and God healed Abi Malich and his wife and his maid servants and they bear children so this is the first time somebody prayed that we heard about praying to God in the in the, in the scriptures so he did not have to pray five times or make names for one of the prayers like Muhammad stole from the word of God see this says, so Abraham prayed unto God. Did he pray five times, brothers and sisters? No. Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abi Malich his, and his wife and his maidservants, and they bear children. So he didn't have to drop down and pray five times. This is something deep, and it's, and it's like, y'all, Muhammad talk about Abraham in the Quran, right? Well, did Abraham pray five times? See? This get real, real serious when you're dealing with somebody that's rightly dividing the word. That's the first time someone prayed in the word of God. He did not have to pray five times or make names for one of the prayers like Muhammad stole from the word of God was Salah. The word Salah, they got Muslims have a prayer called Salah. Muhammad stole that from the word of God and I'm going to prove it right now. Let's go into Psalms. Go into Psalms chapter 3 verse 8. The name of one of y'all prayers is Salah but Muhammad stole this from the word of God. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Salah. You see Psalms chapter 3 verse 8. Salah. Right here, on top of my hand. Salah. So it was written first in stone. And Muhammad stole this from the word of God. He was so inspired by the word of God. He took, he read all these scriptures I'm about to read y'all. Um, Psalms 24 and 10. Watch this. Psalms 24 and 10. Psalms 24 and 10 says... Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Salah. See? The Lord of hosts. Who is the king of glory? Salah. Now we see where Muhammad stole this word Salah from and put it in his prayer. Who told him to do that? It wasn't prophesied that he would do that. He made it up because he stole a lot of things from this word of God. Let's go into Psalms 143, chapter Psalms 143 and verse 6. I stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsteth after thee as a thirsty land. Salah. See? After that, it says, Hear me speedily, O Lord. My spirit faileth 
Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit. See, y'all going to go down into the pit if y'all don't accept Jesus Christ in your life and admit that he is the true Lord and Savior, the only way, the truth, and the life. Only name that men must call on to be saved is Jesus Christ. Sixty-eight verse nineteen. Psalms sixty-eight verse nineteen. Bless be the Lord, who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. Salah. See. Psalm sixty-eight, nineteen. Go to Psalms 32 and 7. I'm just showing and proving all these times where the word Salah was mentioned in the word of God. So you don't have no room to not understand where Muhammad stole it from. Psalms 32 and 7. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Salah. Psalms 32 and 5. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Salah. Now, let's go into Psalms chapter 3 and verse 2. Now we can see clear, real clear. Where did Muhammad steal this word Salah and make it a prayer for the Muslims? He stole it from the word of God, from the holy prophets, Moses' disciples. And it's mentioned in, in the New Testament, I think, too. But let's, let's continue. It says, Psalms chapter 3, verse 2. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God, Salah. Now, Let's go back into Genesis 23, 13. Genesis 23, 13. And he spake unto Ephron in the audience of the people of the land, saying, But if thou wilt give it, I pray thee, Hear me, I will give thee money for the field. Take it of me, and I will bury my dead there. So, we learn right here that he said, I will give thee money for the field. You never heard anybody say, give money for tithes and offerings. Y'all thought I wasn't going to get at y'all prosperity preachers. Yeah, I killed two birds with one stone. This proves tithes was never money. Now, let's continue. Let's go into Matthew. Matthew chapter 6 verse 5 And when thou prayest Thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are For they love to pray standing in the synagogues And in the corners of the streets That they may be seen of men Verily I say unto you They have their reward So well, You are not supposed to be seen of men Now this is a prophecy from Jesus Christ himself this is Jesus Christ who is God speaking himself in Matthew chapter 6 verse 5 he said that they may be seen of men verily I say unto you they have their reward that's not a good reward brothers and sisters because he called them hypocrites Muhammad taught y'all how to pray like a hypocrite because this is Jesus is a prophet Muhammad said he believed in Jesus so if y'all believe in Jesus, you have to believe in these words. If not, you don't believe in him. You don't believe he's a prophet. Whoever receive a prophet in a name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou... When thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. 
So we're not supposed to be praying openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. See, he called y'all heathens. God, Jesus Christ, who is God, called y'all heathens. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 7, it say, Use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. They think they should be heard for their much speaking. They have much speaking because they got to make five prayers a day. You got all these different names for these prayers. But do you think God is hearing you when your leader who taught you how to pray? He was a sinner. God hear not the prayers of sinners. So this is why I'm trying to help every Muslim save their soul. Because if you keep praying the Muslim prayers that Muhammad taught you how to pray, it's not making it into heaven. That's why them demons, the devil, keep coming in and doing all these bad things to y'all. Because you're not protected by the spirit of God. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions. See, when they say they, they got this prayer called Salat, they do it every day. That's vain repetitions. You keep repeating the same prayer and saying the same thing. That's a hypocrite. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye. Therefore, like unto them, for your father knoweth what things you have need of before ye ask him, which are in heaven. I mean, after this manner, therefore, pray ye, our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So, let's go to teachings on fasting. I know it's two teachings on fasting, but this is all I have right now. Moreover, when ye fast, y'all all claim that this is Ramadan and y'all doing the fast right now, right? But this is how the prophet who is God who is called Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us, who was prophesied in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, that a son will be born, a child will be given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called the Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So it's telling us that he's the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Muhammad was never called God. He was called a messenger, a warner, and stuff like that he called himself a prophet nobody prophesied that he would come and speak islam in a different language and all that they said false prophets will come moreover when ye fast be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast verily i say unto you they have their reward but thou when thou fastest anoint thine head and wash thy face that thou appear not unto men to fast y'all think y'all don't appear to men when y'all tell everybody this is ramadan and we fasting see y'all are hypocrites y'all go against my master teachings like this is all a game and joke and laugh about jesus until you gotta answer up to him on judgment day that's why i'm telling y'all to repent and turn from your wicked ways every last one of you muslims if you watching this and you a muslim share this to 10 muslims right now this message is urgent Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. See, that's biblical. All that stuff Muhammad was telling y'all is worldly. And not only is it worldly, he went against Jesus Christ's teachings. You can't go against a prophet, can't go against God and claim you got a revelation from God. Jesus Christ is God. How you gonna go against God and then say, yeah, I got the revelation from God. Anyway, even in Matthew chapter four, verse two, what it say? And when he had fasted, 40 days and 40 nights. Oh, okay. 
he was afterward and hungered. Now I see where y'all stole Ramadan from. Everybody, brothers and sisters, follow along with me in Matthew chapter 4, verse 2. I'm going to hit them so strong today. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. So my master, my Messiah, Jesus Christ fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Muhammad going to create Ramadan and tell y'all to fast a whole month. He tried to emulate and steal what the God did, what God did. He seen Jesus Christ, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel, who is Jesus Christ. And once they seen that, Muhammad said, wow, we got to fast like him. Call it Ramadan and switch it up and make it look like we ain't steal it from him. But we got you, Muhammad. We got all y'all Muslims. We holding y'all upside down by your turbans and letting y'all know, repent. Mark chapter 1 verse 13. Got the Muslims hanging upside down in front of their mosque by their turban. Spiritually, they got to repent. Mark chapter 1 verse 13. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered unto him. See, the same angel that Muhammad, he going to think that Muhammad came and talked to this angel and stuff like that. Muhammad, you ain't no angel come and talk to you. Not this same, not the same angel that we read about in, um, what was it, y'all? It was in... Maybe in Luke. Muhammad claimed that an angel came and talked to him. This is another thing he stole from the Bible. See, this is not, not going to be good for the Muslims because y'all ain't got no truth to back this up because your, your, your Quran came after the Bible. So everything that happened here, we can show and prove it was stolen. An angel foretells Jesus' birth in Luke chapter 1 verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto the city of Galilee called Nazareth, named Nazareth. So why did Muhammad turn around and say, oh, yeah, Gabriel, the angel, talk to me. That's a lie, bold-faced lie, Muhammad, straight from the pits of hell. The shaitan taught you that. And in the sixth month, the angel, ain't that what y'all call him, shaitan? That's who taught Muhammad about that angel. It wasn't no angel. It was Satan talking to him the whole time. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hell, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation it should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth the Son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give, on him, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. So, then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon me. This is why Muhammad stole the Bible and said, The Holy Ghost wrote the Bible. And he, she, you try to put all this stuff in the Quran that you stole from my master. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of god and behold thy cousin elizabeth she hath also conceived the son in her old age and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren for with god nothing shall be impossible so now when we see this we know that an angel foretells jesus birth this is where muhammad tried to say oh an angel talked to me and told me to go create Islam. Ain't no angel talk to you nothing, Muhammad. That was the devil talking to you. So we see Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Let's go into Genesis chapter 7, verse 17. And the flood 
was 40 days upon the earth and the waters increased and bear up the ark and it was lift above the earth. So we see that the flood was 40 days upon the earth and the waters increased and bear up the ark and it was lift up above the earth. So the flood was 40 days. Jesus fasted 40 days. So this is when Noah went in unto the ark and two of all flesh wherein is the breath of life. So the flood was 40 days. Let's go on to Luke chapter 4 verse 2. Luke chapter 4 verse 2 We're going to show y'all where Muhammad stole all His information and his knowledge and wisdom from Being 40 days Tempted of the devil And in those days he did eat nothing And when they were ended He afterward hungered So when he tell y'all y'all created Ramadan And y'all fasting for 40 days It's a mockery of my master It's a mockery of what Jesus Christ did Muhammad didn't create Ramadan He stole it from Jesus Christ fasting 40 days in the wilderness and he didn't eat nothing. Jesus Christ, he fulfilled prophecy that Muhammad thought y'all was doing before Muhammad even thought of it. He's a prophet. He knows all the hearts of men, even when he's not physically here. His word will call out your heart and your intentions. And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil and in those days he did eat nothing and when they were ended he afterward hungered and the devil said unto him if thou be the son of god command this stone that it be made bread and jesus answered him saying it is written that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of god see y'all don't live by every word of god y'all come in my comment section acting like y'all don't speak no english talking about why this why that why this why that you don't know how to read and the devil taking him up into a high mountain shoot him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and the devil said unto him all this power will i give thee and the glory of them for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever i will i give it if thou therefore wilt worship me like y'all do muhammad y'all worship muhammad he's not god he's a false prophet all shall be thine and if you worship these dudes they give you everything go ahead build the mosque do all this do do Whatever, the devil going to let you deceive. As long as you're working for him, he'll give you whatever. Y'all want land in the Muslim countries? Go ahead, take the land. Y'all want to own gas? Go ahead, take the gas oil in Afghanistan, Pakistan. Own the gas. Even throughout America and other countries, y'all can control the gas throughout the world. The devil already told you. He said, if you worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. He tried to quote Psalms and misquoted it. The devil is sneaky, the devil is a liar. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. Hallelujah! 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 Acts chapter 1 verse 3. Praise the Lord! All glory be to God! <laughs> I want to scream and shout. My God is good. Muhammad is a fraud. We're about to show everything, brothers and sisters. We ain't done. We ain't done. If you a Muslim, stay right there. Let me cook. Let me cook. Watch this. Acts chapter 1, verse 3. We just getting, we just getting started. I ain't even take up my warm-up jacket off yet. Watch this. Acts chapter 1, verse 3. To whom also he shewed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, being seen of them 
40 days. That's that 40 days where y'all claim y'all fasting for Ramadan. This was stolen from my master. So when Muslims and when Prophet Muhammad said Jesus is just a prophet, but not God, he or they all meaning all Muslims lie on Moses disciple prophet Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 see y'all don't want to play with me because I'm going to destroy every lie that was in, in um, implemented in your head in that wicked imagination I'm destroying it in Jesus name so uh, let me say that back again so when Muslims or when prophet Muhammad said Jesus is just a prophet but not God that's blasphemy and he and all Muslims lie on Moses' disciple, prophet Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6, and all the apostles and Jesus Christ. Watch this. Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. No, he's just a prophet. The mighty God. Who can change this? Muhammad couldn't change it when he created Islam and ain't can't no other satanic devil worshiping pagan ritual heathen change it. It's God's word. It will not change. All Muslims watching this video living in this generation, you came from the dust and you will die and go back in the dust. And this word will still be the same. It can't none of y'all change this. You seen China try to change it? Did it change? No. They just showed how corrupt their heart was. Remember the word of God, double-edged sword, dividing the soul and spirit, showing the intents of your heart. So it says that his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. Who told Muhammad to call him a prophet? Who told Muhammad to take the word of God and twist it and turn, and turn it and take scriptures out of context? He said he talked about Moses in the Quran. He should have had knowledge before he started speaking things that could cause every Muslim their soul to die and go to hell. Y'all don't want to perish. You want the truth. The truth is the light. The truth is to set you free. So if you want to be free from the lies that Muhammad built when he created Islam, without no lies, it wouldn't be no Islam. If you want to be free, if you want to be free, you better hearken into this truth. Hearken unto the words of the Lord the mighty God, the everlasting father. He's not a son, the everlasting father. There's three in heaven that bear record, that bear witness and their witness is true. You got father, who's Jesus, the everlasting father prophesied in Isaiah chapter nine, verse six. You got son, Jesus, the son of the son. God said, my only begotten son, who am I? Well, please. Father, son, Holy Ghost, Jesus. So, the comforter, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. See? Muhammad told y'all a Muslim is whoever submit to the will of God, but Jesus Christ is God, and y'all not submitting to his will. So we have problems. We have big problems. It's either y'all admit the truth and admit that Muhammad was a liar, or you will die in your sins and go to hell. I'm not debating. I'm not here to prove what I'm saying. This is a warning. It's either you take it, or you, you will find out when judgment day come you're not making it in the paradise believing in Muhammad if y'all believe in Muhammad you're not gonna get in the paradise but you will be delivered to the pits of fire the shaitan gonna get y'all watch this Exodus chapter 20 we talk about how Muhammad was a false god even Buddha any god y'all believe in I don't care who it is this apply to every god the Hindu thousands of gods whoever all gods that's not Jesus Christ this apply to you Exodus chapter 20, verse 3 through 6. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So when Muhammad made Allah and stuff like that, that's not an other God? He told y'all a different way about God than what we learned from Moses' disciples and what we learned from Jesus Christ. Jesus never taught us anything different than what Moses taught. He based his whole prophecy on fulfilling every scripture from the Old Testament from the old prophets. So how are they going to come up here and say this man no God and it's not the same God that we heard of from the holy book from the book of prophecy from the scriptures this is God's word uh, we don't know nothing else that's God's word so when you deviate and do things that's opposite 
you are a false prophet. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. We all knew God as God. It wasn't no Allah. Them people spoke Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. He got different names. Hamashiach might be his name in um, Hebrew. So why y'all got to come up and say Allah and all this stuff? We already had different languages for the, the, the pronounce their name. The Hebrew said it differently than the Greeks because they got different language spelling. So thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. See? or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. So if that's not a graven image, explain to me what Russia did. When Russia pull out them votes, them are not false gods got y'all worshiping them. They saying them as ancient Hebrew biblical Israelites. The closest thing you gonna have a relationship with the ancient Hebrew Israelites is reading the word of God. You can't watch no picture and get no closer to um, God. That's some graven image idolatry sacrificing food to devil worship if y'all eat and go study them pictures you sacrificing food to idols i don't care how nobody feel thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth hear that thou shalt not bow down thyself to them what do muhammad got y'all doing when y'all do these prayers the Salah that he stole from my master. He stole from King David and all the holy prophets of old time. That name Salah was already in the word of God. Who told Muhammad to make it into a Muslim prayer? The devil deceived him to tell him to steal this stuff and not give credit where credit is due and follow after the prophets like everyone else did. You ain't supposed to come in and change. Who are you to think you're going to change the word of God into a lie? And showing, oh yeah, hold on. Thou shall not bow down thyself to them. So when he got y'all doing the Muslim prayer, he tell y'all to lay down a rug, the prayer rug, and then you bow down to him. He taught you how to pray. You know, Muhammad, when he was teaching y'all how to pray, he was in relationships that was, that was considered not appropriate for a man to be in. All men belong with women, not young little girls. So Muhammad was teaching y'all how to pray, but at the same time he had sins. God hear not the prayers of sinners. I want every Muslim to listen to these words and hearken and hope you save your soul by making the right decision. Give your life to Christ. Repent. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. He make y'all bow down when y'all pray, nor serve them. See, you serve him when you believe in that Quran. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children. A lot of y'all wonder why y'all children go through hard times. This is why, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. It says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will hold for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. See, if you claim God is God, you will believe in his word, which is the word of God. It's not Muhammad. God ain't talked to Muhammad. Ain't none of the prophets prophesied Muhammad. Everything we say about Jesus, we showing and proving. So Muslims get mad. They know that they can't say anything what I'm saying is not biblical. How, how about we go to Exodus 22 and 20? So I can give y'all some more wisdom. You're going to be blessed. If you're a Muslim watching this, you're going to be blessed after this. Exodus 22 and 20. He that sacrificeth unto any god save unto the lord only he shall be utterly destroyed you see you don't want to fall into the wrath of the living god he took the people out of egypt when they was in bondage he's powerful muhammad ain't never saved nobody he ain't do no healings muhammad ain't do no miracles he ain't baptized nobody why would you believe in a man that never saved nobody life he never healed the sight of the blind a man was born blind jesus healed him a woman had an issue of blood 13 years. No physicians or doctors could do nothing. Came to Jesus and was healed. Touched the hem of his garment and was made whole. It says, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Oh, my bad. That's a whole different law. I wasn't supposed to. My bad, y'all. I just felt like that probably needed to come out maybe. All right. So when we go into Exodus chapter 22 and verse 20. 
he that sacrificeth unto any god save unto the lord only he shall be utterly destroyed when muhammad tell y'all to do the pilgrimage and y'all go to mecca and kiss that rock like that rock got more power than the creator who created that rock it shows that y'all are unstable unlearned delusional and y'all rest at the holy scriptures like y'all do all the other ones to your own destruction whose end will be according to their works you'll know them by their fruits god said he gave y'all the spirit of error not the spirit of truth therefore y'all do greatly err not knowing the scriptures nor the power of god the lord rebuked thee every muslim living in this generation better hearken unto the words of the lord Let's go into Exodus chapter 23 and verse 13. Exodus 23 and verse 13. And in all things that I have said unto you, be circumspect and make no mention of the name of other gods, neither let it be heard out of thy mouth. So if you love the Lord, who is the true and living God, you wouldn't make no mention of no other gods, Allah, Muhammad, or none of that talking about this is my god and who i profess i follow him i'm a muslim what are you talking about god never told you that the devil taught muhammad that so that's who told you so y'all don't want to play with the word because i come in here with, with like the spirit of a bulldozer knocking everything down all right i guess we got 23 and 24 exodus 20 chapter 23 verse 24 and then i think 32 thou shall not bow down to their gods nor serve them nor do after their works but thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images see you shouldn't be worshiping them images in russia if you love god with all your heart and your soul you go follow his laws and his words thou shalt not bow down to their gods nor serve them remember nor do after their works but thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images y'all bowing down to um my yacht y'all believe in buddha y'all believe y'all anunnaki gods from the planet kai and all this stuff y'all are following after the abominations of the canaanites the hevites the amorites all these people who, who got cut off go read the chapter before that in exodus chapter 22 verse 23 so exodus chapter 22 and verse 32 thou shall make no covenant with them nor with their gods you you made a covenant with them you sold your spirit your life your soul your consciousness to these people who never knew god they never seen god Muhammad never knew God or seen God and I'm showing and proving it watch this Matthew chapter 7 and verse 15 Matthew chapter 7 and verse 15 Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves So it tells you to beware of false prophets It never told us a prophet was gonna come and use a whole different doctrine and teach stuff and go against Jesus and we got to follow him? No. He said, you'll know them by their fruit. It said, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. See? Cast into the fire. And this is what they're going to say. When they, when they think they're making it to paradise, but when they make it to the pit of fire, if they don't repent and turn from their ways, they're going to say, Lord, Lord. They're going to say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. See, it say he that built his house upon the rock. I would liken him to a wise man. It ain't say go to a rock and say you taking pilgrimage and go act like you praying to this rock. That's not that. Where do you learn this stuff? The devil deceived millions of people when he created Islam. And I'm here to, to speak the word of God and destroy all deception in Jesus' name. Psalms 96, verse 4 through 5. We're not going back and forth with y'all Muslims in the comment section. What I say is the word and it can't be changed. We're not debating this today. It's the word and it is stay. And every day, 
every Muslim, I don't care if you have a hundred children from now, if your children, 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 children have children, this word ain't gonna change. You will die and go to hell or go to heaven and this word gonna be the same. So I'm not here to debate it. I'm here to teach it and stand on it. Psalms 96, verse four through five. Y'all wanna debate, hit me on my email. We go on Instagram. Y'all scared. Psalms chapter 96, verse four through five. I never had an imam or a Muslim tell me what I'm saying is wrong. And I've been calling y'all out boldly. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. That's small gods. That means Muhammad, Buddha, Confucius. The Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. None of them gods can't destroy body and hell. Man can only destroy the body. But he can't destroy the soul and the body in hell. Only God. For all the gods of the nations are idols. Wait. It say all the gods of the nations. I thought Muhammad was a messenger and he was from Prophet Allah and all this stuff. Not Prophet Allah. He was a prophet. They got a message from Allah. But that ain't what the word of God say. That ain't what King David said in Psalms 96 verse 5. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. See, who you going to listen to? Somebody that made the heavens or somebody that stole from all of these prophets that was going through all these persecutions just to stand up for this word and teach people these things because they was enslaved to Egyptians. So y'all going to go with the word who freed the Hebrew Israelites from the bondage and yoke of the Egyptians or are you going to go with the word who don't got no connection with this word who we see power strength glory honor majesty see we can't listen to these liars creating all these false doctrines so we went through Psalms chapter 9 um, Psalms 96 verse 4 through 5 for all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. And you telling me Muhammad ain't an idol? Hit the like button, people. So now we ran out of Psalms. Let's go into Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 20. Because I always take it back to the old time to show you. Nobody was supposed to do these things that Muhammad is doing. That's why nobody follows that stuff if you know the words of you know God's word from his true prophets and messengers. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. See, this word was never a joke, never to be played with. You don't come prophesying things. And if it's not in God's name, he ain't command you to speak. You speaking in the name of other gods, you were put to death. This wasn't a game and it's still not a game. That spirit and the fear should still be inside of you. Because all unrighteousness is a sin. The wages of sin is death. You believing in the false God is a sin. It's not, nothing changed. Nobody's gonna physically put you to death, but you will just be destroyed from your works. You're gonna be persecuted. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse one through three. If there arise among you a prophet, like Muhammad or Buddha, or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, let us go after other gods. Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You break the first commandment saying we are part of Krishlam. Krishlam is not biblical. You are Islam and a Christian. You a Muslim and a Christian? Chrislam? That don't even make no sense. If that ain't the devil straight out of the pits of hell, I don't know what it is, brothers and sisters. See, I came to cook today. I didn't came to use the, uh, I'm not using the steam fryer. We putting y'all on the, on the stove, on frying. Grease on the stove, 
frying you up like fried chicken. We ain't using the steam fryer today. Genesis. That was um. That was Genesis. No, that was in Deuteronomy, chapter thirteen, and verse thirteen. No, verse one through three. Sorry, we gonna read it back. Deuteronomy, verse thirteen, chapter thirteen, verse one through three. False prophets are to be destroyed. This is what God commanded in Deuteronomy. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or a wonder and the sign or the wonder come to pass whereof he spake unto thee, saying, let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known and let us serve them. See, you were warned of the false prophets to be destroyed in the Old Testament. You were warned in the New Testament. And it told you their end will be according to their works. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet. What did Muhammad call himself? A prophet. But is he speaking the words of, of, of these, of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Did he quote any scriptures? No, he didn't. He called Mary the queen of heaven, didn't he? Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. A lot of witches love Muslims because they don't say nothing against witchcraft. Muslims wear the crystals and stuff. They don't speak against that stuff. So you'll have a lot of witches and they team up with each other. They all join the Freemasons and stuff like that. Let's go into Deuteronomy. No, let's go into Isaiah 8 and 20. Isaiah 8 and 20, y'all. I'm cooking right now. Isaiah 8 and 20. To the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word it is because there is no light in them Muhammad they have no light in him see he didn't speak according to this word when it said thou shalt not commit adultery how many wives did he have when it says thou shalt not steal then he say a Muslim can steal from an unbeliever he didn't speak according to this word he was a false prophet I'm gonna give you the Ten Commandments just to show you what I'm saying is biblical Y'all keep playing with me. I ain't come to play no games. I came to cook y'all until you get burnt. <laughs> I came to fry you up. Overheat. All right. Ten commandments for Israel. And God speak all these words saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage thou shalt have no other gods before me first commandment first commandment we gotta attack this in the spirit y'all are weak every muslim if you want to be saved you better hearken into the words of the lord these are not my words these are not my sayings this is god speaking to you thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth if you think them things in russia are not graven images well i, I don't know what the, what you're going to tell god on judgment day thou shalt not bow down thyself to them or nor serve them if you go to that museum and say you want to see that picture when they put it up you're bowing down and serving them for i the lord thy god am a jealous god if you bow down to that rock and take pilgrimage you're bowing down to a um other gods see y'all go take y'all mecca and go take your pilgrimage once a year and y'all go pray to that rock like it's a sacred rock that ain't rock that rock ain't no better than the rock in the graveyard that one of y'all grandmothers just got buried in or somebody in your family just graveyard got buried in the grave the rock ain't no better than that rock in Gibraltar or whatever they trying to call it that rock ain't worth nothing it can be removed and it won't be as sacred as y'all think it is y'all put y'all trust in creation not the creator thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for I the Lord thy God am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments Thou shall not 
take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. So, six days the Lord made heaven and the earth. Seventh day, he rested. And the sea, excuse me, and all them that, and all that in them is and rested the seventh day wherefore the lord blessed the sabbath day and hallowed it honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the lord thy god giveth thee thou shalt not kill thou shalt not commit adultery when he had all them wives muslims say that you can have more than five wives when malcolm x found out that elijah muhammad was sleeping around with all them young underage girls the same way muhammad was doing these Muslims got a lot in common, don't they? When Malcolm X found out that Elijah Muhammad was doing the same thing as Prophet Muhammad, sleeping around with underage girls, Malcolm X left the nation of Islam and started his own movement. Why are y'all Muslims not leaving the, the um, Quran and leaving Muhammad the same way Malcolm X left um, Elijah Muhammad and W.D. Fard from the nation of Islam when he found out Elijah Muhammad was messing with little girls? That's a real upright stand-up spirit right there. I'm not saying I agree with everything he did, but that was righteous. So how come when we see these people that say that they worship Muhammad and they see what he's doing is messing with Aisha, they don't leave like the spirit put in Malcolm X to get away from this. Like Job and Lot, when they were seeing Sodom and Gomorrah, all that filthiness, Lot got up out of there, huh? He ain't look back or nothing. His wife looked back, got turned to a pillar of salt. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Muslims say they can have five wives. The man I was following said, you can have as many wives as you can take care of. He had more than one wife. See what I'm saying? Thou shalt not steal. Muhammad told y'all, y'all can steal from people that's not Muslims. That's not believers. See, that's darkness. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. What's so righteous about taking something that's not yours? That's a war mentality. We ain't in no war where you get what I'm saying. If if you at war, you get to steal the other nations uh captives and stuff like that. That's a war mentality. Like he put war in your mind, not peace. But he say a Muslim is anyone who submit to the will of God. How you submitting to the will of God if they put it in the Quran that y'all can steal from unbelievers? That's not submitting to the will of God. So let's look at it like this. God don't steal your heart. God don't steal your peace. He don't steal your joy. He want to give you his joy, his peace, and make you at peace. But y'all spitting on God. Y'all mocking God. Y'all telling us that Muhammad is more powerful than God. So did we run? We ran into Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20 right yep now we gonna go into we cooking right now y'all we cooking Isaiah now let's go into Jeremiah 28 and 15 Jeremiah 28 and 15 I want to end all of the confusion so the Muslims can really have the truth and they can make a decision. Choose this day whom ye serve. Jeremiah. Because Jesus Christ loves y'all. And y'all can look at me as enemies, but I still love y'all. And that's why I'm here long suffering to teach y'all the right ways of truth. The, the ways of God. Jeremiah 28 and 15. Then said the prophet Jeremiah unto Hananiah the prophet, Hear now, Hananiah, the Lord hath not sent thee, but thou makest this people 
to trust in a lie. See, the Lord ain't send you, Muhammad. Why you make this people to trust in a the lie? Therefore, thus saith the Lord, behold, I will cast thee from off the face of the earth. This year thou shalt die because thou hast taught rebellion against the Lord. See, rebelliousness as the sin of witchcraft. What Muhammad teaching y'all when he tell y'all to follow Islam? Rebellion against the Lord. Let me get that back. Y'all want that back again? That's powerful right there. This this speaks to Islam in volumes. Anybody who believe in Buddha, Islam, I don't care. Any other God that's not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is the word. This is God's word, too. It's not you feeling like you feel you don't like somebody and you want something bad to happen to them. That's your wicked imagination. You can't prove what you how you feel that God feel that way. This is not what I feel. This is God's word. Can't nobody change it. Well, everybody living in this world will die and go to the to the dust. This word will always be the same. So it don't matter how you think and how you feel. You can't change this word. None of y'all. Nobody. Jeremiah. I'm seeing a lot of uh, 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 weird, funny movements. Let me go to a better location because I'm being stalked and watched for no reason. They keep coming, acting like they cleaning and it's not enough cleaning to do. This small little development, y'all keep walking back and forth like y'all cleaning. Y'all ain't cleaning nothing. I'm going to move to the front of the development. Maybe. Matter of fact, I'm getting out of this development. I'm going to go down the street. I'm sorry, y'all. Muhammad claimed that he got the truth. He claimed he know what he's talking about. He claimed Islam is the way, the truth, and the life. I'm here to prove to you right now. Muhammad never knew God. He never seen God. All his revelations was from the devil, from Shaitan. And I'm approved with the scriptures. Give me one second. I'm not, not going to take long. I'm pulling into where I'm going. Let's get back. Let's get back to work. Let, hit the like. Share this to at least 10 Muslims if you can. Because this is very... Uh, Serious. This is for their soul. Their life is on the line. If they want to make it into paradise, it's important that they hear these words so they can make a wise decision. They don't have to believe in the lie when the truth always been here. It's just it been hidden in front of our eyes and people always deceive you when it comes to the truth and try to make you think the Bible don't mean what it say. So I'm here to tell you the devil is a liar and step all over his kingdom in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Man, I love fighting the devil. I love fighting the devil. Like, for real. This spiritual warfare is for me. I, I was born for this. I was born to destroy the works of the devil. I'm just starting to figure this out now. Jeremiah 28 and 15. It's marvelous in our eyes. Then said the prophet Jeremiah unto Hananiah, the prophet. Hear now, Hananiah, the Lord hath not sent thee, but thou makest this people to trust in a lie. You see? Thou makest this people to trust in a lie. 78%. We about to cook. 78%. We ain't going nowhere no time soon. But thou makest this people to trust in a lie. Therefore, thus saith the Lord. Behold, I will cast thee from off the face of the earth. This year thou shalt die because thou hast taught rebellion against the Lord. So Hananiah the prophet died the same year in the seventh month. See? Rebelliousness is as the sin of witchcraft. Muhammad telling y'all to worship the queen of heaven. Don't go nowhere. Because we're going into Romans chapter 16, verse 18. Romans chapter 16, verse 18. Romans chapter 16, verse 18. When I'm done with y'all Muslims... Y'all not going to be saying no more prayers. Y'all not going to be saying Allah Akbar. Y'all going to be saying Hosanna in the highest. Hallelujah. Y'all going to be screaming Hosanna in the highest. Romans chapter 16, verse 18. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good works and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. See, Muhammad had a few good works. He had some fair speeches. But what he did was deceive the hearts of the simple. 
it says, now I beseech you, brethren, Romans chapter 16, verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. It says, for your obedience is come abroad unto all men. I am glad therefore on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. See? The God of peace. Muhammad told y'all a Muslim is someone who submit to the will of God. Or Allah. So how can you submit to the will of God if Jesus Christ is God? And we just showed you in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. But you don't submit to his will because he taught us how to fast and how to pray. Let's go in the mark again, brothers and sisters. They say a Muslim is anyone who submits to will God. I came to destroy y'all doctrine in Jesus' name. Y'all not getting out of this. Trust me. Y'all not getting out of this. Fill them, all the Muslims in Philly, it's going to be turned upside down when I'm done with this. This is about to get real biblical right now. Muhammad said he believed Jesus Christ is a prophet. Muslims say a Muslim is anyone who submits to the will of God. I just showed y'all and proved Jesus Christ is God. Go to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. His name will be called the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Three that bear reckoned in heaven, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. We already claimed all this before Abraham was I am. I'm the beginning and the ending, the Alpha and Omega. Now watch this. Muhammad claimed that he was getting these revelations from God. A Muslim is anyone who submit to the will of God. Jesus Christ is God. You didn't submit to Jesus Christ's will. He said... Moreover, when ye fast, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 16, Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Why did Muhammad create Ramadan and tell everybody when it was to appear to men to fast? Jesus told us, But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast. See, why do y'all appear unto men to fast? If y'all claim Jesus is a prophet and y'all follow him, we know that he was God. He was more than a prophet. Muhammad didn't have the truth. This is the lies that I'm exposing of Islam to show y'all to break free because the truth will make you free. If you believe in them lies after I'm giving you all this truth, then that is you wanting to live in darkness and deceive people and make your daughters and sons pass through the fire because you don't want the truth. But unto thy father, which is in secret. So, listen. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father, which is in secret. And thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. That's biblical. Y'all can't say nothing what I'm saying ain't biblical. See? Now watch this. We went in from Matthew. We went in from Romans. Go in the book of Acts, y'all. Go to, to the book of Acts chapter 20, verse 28 through 30, because I still want to prove why Muhammad, Buddha, and all these dudes is false gods. The book of Acts chapter 20, verse 28 through 30, it says, Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. So Jesus Christ purchased the church of God with his own blood. And look what he said. Listen, this is a warning he said. For I know this, this Paul, I believe. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. See, Muhammad wanted to draw away disciples after him. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. See? Y'all ain't getting away with this. These people put, their, my brothers and they put their life on the line to teach these teachings. And y'all just come and think you're going to corrupt them and it's going to be okay. Islam going to be a business? No. 
y'all gonna lose a lot of followers as long as I got breath in my body. I came to speak the truth. Tell your imam to prove me wrong. He can't prove me wrong with the scriptures and you definitely can't pull out no Quran and say you're gonna prove me wrong. I'll burn that Quran because it's a blasphemous book, straight up. I'm bold, brothers and sisters. I burn the Quran. Like that's how bold I am. Y'all wanna see me burn the Quran today? It's no love for these false prophets in the spirit. I love y'all, but I I'm not following y'all way. We gonna tear down y'all customs for real. It told us we gotta burn down and tear down a custom. I'm doing what God said. Care how nobody feel? Let's go. First John chapter two, verse 18. I dare one of y'all Muslims to burn the Bible. First John chapter two, verse 18. And because y'all said y'all believe Jesus is a prophet. So if you burn that, you'll be burning what Muhammad said he learned from. So if you burn that, you might as well burn the Quran. See, it's dangerous coming up the word with coming up against the word of God. So first John chapter two, verse 18 through 19. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time they went out from us, but they were not of us. See, so Muhammad went out from us. He knew about the word of God. He talked about Moses. He talked about the scriptures. He talked about Jesus being a prophet, but he were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist, that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. So if you acknowledge the son, you have the father also. It's telling you the son is the father. Y'all don't get this. Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the son. Jesus wasn't mentioned in the beginning. So what are they talking about? They talking about the spirit of God in Genesis chapter one, verse one, and in the father, see? And this is the promise that he had promised us even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. And ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things. And is truth and is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. See? See? Now, we went through 1 John. Beat y'all up. Now, let's go to Jeremiah. Can't no Muslim type in the comment section faster than the Holy Spirit is using me to teach. It's over for y'all. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. It's over. Jeremiah 23, verse 21. I don't care if y'all go get 20 Muslims. Y'all cannot put as much comments to deceive the people from hearing this word that I'm preaching that they can follow their self in the Bible. It's over for y'all. Jeremiah 23 and 21. No more deception. No more lies. Without no lies, Muhammad wouldn't have been able to create Islam. If Muhammad only knew how to tell the truth, we wouldn't have no Islam. I'm giving it to y'all. Hardcore teachings. Jeremiah 23 and 21. I'm hungry for the Lord. I thirst for this, this wisdom and this knowledge and teaching and to, to share his word. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. See? They, 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 no, God ain't sent these prophets, Buddha and Muhammad, yet they ran. God ain't speak to them, yet they prophesied. Buddha ain't prophesied. No scriptures, his whole ministry. Well, he didn't have no ministry. Don't nobody got their own ministry. But him trying to minister 
to people. He didn't prophesy no scriptures. Anyway, that's Jeremiah, right? 23 and 21. We're going to go into Revelation. I guess we could put the phone on the charge. We still got 73%, but I'm going to put it on the charge just so we can not have to worry about nothing. I am cooking. We cooking right now, brothers and sisters. Revelation chapter 20, verse 10. Revelation 20 and 10. It say, And the devil that deceived them, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. This is where every Muslim will go if you don't repent and turn from your wicked ways and accept jesus christ in your life today and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are that's where muhammad is you hear that this is where muhammad is or every muslim you want to know where muhammad is i'm gonna tell you you go to revelation chapter 20 verse 10 it tells you where Muhammad got sent to. He didn't make it into paradise. Sorry to tell y'all. Well, I'll start from verse 9. No, I'll start from verse 7. Just to give y'all more context. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. That's where Muhammad is. He, that's where he's sending every Muslim. He can't get into heaven. You can't get into heaven following Muhammad. He's in the fire, lake and brimstone. He was a false prophet. This is why I'm telling y'all, it's in the word of God. Jesus Christ, the only way, the truth, and the life. Muhammad came and told y'all he's the last prophet because he found out Jesus Christ is the only way, the truth, and the life. The only name men must be called on earth to make it into heaven is Jesus. So Muhammad said, I'm the last messenger to steal from all of the power that Jesus had. But the Lord rebuked thee. Get thee behind me, Satan. Muhammad ain't no prophet of nothing He's about a prophet If Muhammad is a prophet Then that means Tommy from Rugrats Was the prophet of um the century Like come on brothers and sisters Let's go I ain't come to play no games Revelation chapter 20 verse 10 And the devil that deceived them Was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone Where the beast and the false prophet are And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever see y'all are being tormented day and night forever and ever because you know deep down in your head in your heart in your mind in your spirit and your soul that muhammad told y'all a bunch of lies and he told y'all how to keep them up to stand up on them lies he taught y'all how to keep up a lie now let's go to um galatians let's go to galatians Hold on. Where Galatians at? Here we at. Galatians chapter 1 verse 8. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all know what time it is. I saved the best for last, brothers and sisters. Now, Muhammad claimed that it, it, Gabriel, the archangel, came and talked to him and all this stuff, right? Now, watch this. It don't matter if he claimed that the angel came and talked to him because we got every, every deceiver, everybody that tried to come and pull you toss you to and from with every wind and doctrine the apostles already warned us and shut them down watch this it say galatians chapter 1 verse 8 they knew muhammad was going these are prophets this is a book of prophecy so they perverted the gospel when muhammad came and told you yeah i believe jesus is a prophet you shouldn't have put my master name in the bible if you didn't want to get condemned for not following his law and corrupting his law watch this I marvel, I'm going to start at Galatians chapter 1 verse 6. I marvel 
that ye are so soon removed from him that calleth for him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Hear this? Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. See? Muhammad seek to please men. Telling y'all this it, angel talked to him, but he didn't prophesy of the words of the prophets in the scriptures. And it says, but though we or an angel from heaven, he said, angel Gabriel came down from heaven and talked to him, but he preached a different gospel telling y'all it's okay to lie. It's okay to steal from unbelievers. Huh? Moses said, thou shalt not steal. So he went against God's commandments and God's laws, but claimed that he got a revelation from God. That wasn't God. It wasn't the same God from the Bible. It may have been them false gods who was making the um, Hebrew Israelites do idol worship, them Egyptian gods or something. Somebody different than the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob talked to Muhammad. I'm proving to y'all it's not the same God. We almost done. I know y'all can't, can't do nothing with this, but I, I want to I want to pr pr keep proving myself beyond. I want to give y'all no room to come back. Y'all going to submit to Jesus. How about that? First Timothy. Because y'all put them in your Quran. If y'all wouldn't have put them in your Quran, I wouldn't have had to teach these hardcore teachers like this. Um, First Timothy chapter four, verse one through two. Now the spirit speaketh expressly. All these scriptures apply to Muhammad and Buddha and any other false god. Now the spirit speaketh expressly, Elijah Muhammad too, that in the latter time, the Freemasons too, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy. Muhammad was speaking hypocrisy and lies, telling y'all that we got to fast and call it Ramadan. Jesus already taught us how to fast. If you believe he was a prophet, why you go against his prophecy? If I believe this man is telling the truth, would I not listen to what he's telling me? Would I do the opposite of what he's telling me? You get what I'm saying? If Jesus was a prophet and he told the disciples to throw your net into the water and the first fish that you catch, it's going to have a treasure. Open it up and it's going to have money in his mouth. They did it and it happened. Muhammad doesn't listen, so he won't get the same results as the apostles and the prophets. He's only going to get the worst results you'll see from disobeying God. Now watch this. He taught another doctrine. He cursed all the Muslims. I'm showing y'all First Gal Galatians chapter 1, verse 8. Y'all are all cursed until you denounce Islam, renounce Islam. Tell everybody how Muhammad that created the Quran of Islam was a false prophet. Burn the Quran if you have to, because that's what I might do. I'm ready to burn the Quran today. I'm ready to go buy a Quran from Barnes and Noble and literally light it on fire to show y'all my faith. And, and I just got to see how I'm going to pray and ask God to see, see what I need to do. But I'm bold and I want to just show y'all that I don't have no fear and I don't worship no other gods, but I will tear down their customs and everything that they stand for. You don't think they kill Muslims? I mean, Muslims kill Christians for saying that Muhammad was a false prophet? First Timothy chapter four, verse one through two, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Their conscience seared with a hot iron. Now we're going to go to Ezekiel 22 and 25. I feel like when they call Jesus Christ a prophet, that's blasphemy. So until y'all call him God, I'll burn y'all Quran. I don't care. 
It's up for all y'all. I don't care who you is, a imam, a soldier. It's up for all y'all. Y'all can't do nothing what I'm saying either. You can't prove me wrong. Why Quilly Mills, he's a Muslim, but he's talking about a bunch of violence and guns and drugs in his rap videos. Quilly Mills from Philly. He a Muslim. Allahu Akbar, right, Quilly? Yeah, y'all stop playing with me. Y'all God ain't holy and righteous. He don't make you want to live holy. Y'all just learn how to look good in front of the public. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 25. I ain't come to play no games. I came to tear y'all apart. Got the boy, got the stove on high and the grease is popping up. Don't come near the stove. You gonna get skin burned and your skin gonna bubble up. Don't come near this though. We cooking. Ezekiel 22 and 25. I'm not responding to no comments until I'm done. Almost done too. Ezekiel 22 and 25. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion, ravening the prey. They have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. See? Now, this is speaking about Jerusalem, but this prophecy also applies to all prophets that came and called themselves prophets. It says, her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they shewed difference between the unclean and the clean and have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths and I am profaned among them. Now that was dedicated to the Jerusalem priests and things like that, the prophets and stuff. It says, and her prophets have daubed them with untempered mortar, seeing vanity and divining lies unto them saying, thus say the Lord God, when the Lord hath not spoken. See, that's what Muhammad did. Said, thus said the Lord God, when the Lord hath not spoken to you. His, his whole, look, look, her princes, he, he act like he was a prince. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves, ravening the prey to shed blood and to destroy souls to get dishonest gain. Muhammad told y'all that y'all gonna have a jihad. He said, start a jihad with people who don't believe in Muhammad. Muhammad. So, to start war and to destroy souls, to shed blood. Jesus never shed no blood. He never commanded nobody to shed blood. So, y'all wanna get radical. I get radical with the word of God. You call me whatever you want. I take all persecution. How about this? They should have never told us we have freedom of religion if we can't disagree with every other religion and stand on our religion. This is what freedom is about, right? Well, I'm going to exercise it. I don't want nothing bad to happen to no Muslims, but you will die and go to hell in your sins if you don't repent and turn from your wicked ways. So 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God you see that Muhammad opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God he tried to make y'all believe that he was some type of prophet of God but what did he do it says Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse three, let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that he as God. So that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So what these people do, they try to act like they're God. They want to sit in the temple of God and act like they're God. Ain't nobody worshiping no man. We only worship God. Hallelujah. All glory to the true and living God. When I get out and yell, 
It echo! Watch this. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! All glory to God! Muhammad is a false prophet! Hear that echo? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Muhammad is a false prophet! Let all it let let the whole I'm in a I'm a voice crying in the wilderness saying repent. I love that echo. It sounds so beautiful. You hear God's creation, you hear the spirit of God screaming and crying, calling on the Lord. And then you hear the echo of God's creation, all the birds in the background. It's beautiful. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for all this beautiful creation. Well, I can be myself. The animals get out. The animals fly. The birds fly. Don't nobody control no bird. You can't control my spirit. Can't no man control the spirit. You can't. I don't know what they taught y'all in them free Masonic temples, but you can't control this spirit. I don't take, I ain't take the oath. I'm not down with none of y'all. I worship God. The Muslims and, and the um, Muslims pray with all y'all different people. I ain't doing none of that. We pray to the true and living God. He taught you how to pray disrespecting Jesus. He, Jesus said do it in secret. Y'all ain't praying for one another. Y'all just all sit down on the rugs and pray in the mosque. That's not biblical. That's not biblical. Aftab Ma'ud. How about this? Y'all know all them psychiatrists? And them people that work at the medical center and the psychiatric homes and all that stuff when they send you to a hospital and get a psych reaction, all them people practice witchcraft and a lot of them are Muslims. They let these Muslims go through these Muslim sororities, these fraternities, and they become witches and they get jobs at hospitals and they destroy people's lives. When I went there and they lied on me and, and, and lied on me, and took me into the hospital for that reason. It was a Muslim witch trying to tell me what's in my like you. You just did all these tests. How about you tell me? What are you asking me? Y'all got me all drugged up. I don't even know what's going on. Y'all kidnapped me and injured me. But it's OK. I got my strength back in Jesus name. You ain't take my spirit. You might have took a little bit of strength. I can't lift weights the same way I used to lift weights. Y'all took some of my strength, but I guarantee you I returned it back to sender. I guarantee you I stood up for myself and, and, and complained against the cops that lied, the judge that lied and wrote a warrant with no probable cause, no evidence showing and proving that a crime was committed. Y'all got to answer up to these things. That's why y'all hate me, because I stand up against y'all when y'all try to get away with raping people. That's rape. That's a molestation. That's oppression. Y'all want people to be scared and try to act like y'all bullies. No, I'm going to take all y'all information. I'm going to keep reporting y'all. And I hope the FBI come down on y'all and start getting y'all real hard. It's not a game. Y'all been trying to bully me for too long. I've been fighting over seven years against these devils. And he shall speak great words against the most high and shall wear out the saints of the most high and think the change times and laws. What did Muhammad do when he told y'all to create Ramadan? He changed times and laws. The spiritual law Jesus gave us on fasting and prayer. Nobody told Muhammad to pray that, to do that if he thought Jesus Christ was a prophet. And they shall be given into his hand until the time and times in the dividing of time. See? In the dividing of time. But the judgment shall, shall sit and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it until the end. So. It says, he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and a dividing of time. So what Muhammad is doing is the same thing that we read about in Daniel. He changed times and laws. Telling people to create Ramadan. That's prophesied in Daniel. Let's go to 1 Timothy. First Timothy 
chapter 6, verse 3 through 5. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but dotting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, relings, evil surmisings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. So they teaching otherwise. They don't consent to the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine, which is according to godliness. It says, let as many servants in 1 Timothy chapter 6, let as many servants as under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. Let's go into Galatians chapter 2, verse 4. After this, I'm getting out the car now. Galatians chapter 2, verse 4. Galatians chapter 2, verse 4, or maybe move to a different place. I keep going places to be alone and be. Because I know how this world is, and I know how darkness works. So people only come around to spy on me. They ain't coming around to learn or, or you know what i'm saying you will be saying amen preach brother they could my neighbors keep walking around spying on me i don't be saying nothing i just let it go and that because of false brethren unawares brought in who came in privily to spy out our liberty that's what they do to spy out our liberty which we have in christ jesus that they might bring us into bondage to whom we gave place by subjection. No, not for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with, with you. So this, this, is what, this is what they do. They try to bring in false brethren, came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. We all know that Egypt was bondage. The Egyptians, when they talk about Egypt, that means slavery. He said, took you out of the land of Egypt. That means slavery. So when you see this in Galatians chapter two and verse four, it's saying false brethren unawares brought in who came in privily to spy out our liberty. So they spies. They want to hear all this knowledge and all this wisdom that we preach him so they can go back and try to do things against it. They ain't come in and try to support it. So it say that they might bring us into bondage to whom we gave place by subjection. No, not for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. That's why I start acting crazy when I feel like you coming over here to spy. I'm going to turn up. We're going to see what spirit you got in you because the spirit inside me is going to prove everything. And I can see things in the spirit and I can see the state troopers spying and riding by places they ain't supposed to be riding by stalking. So I command every monitoring spirit to be destroyed in Jesus Christ's holy name. Send them back to the pits of hell where they came from in Jesus Christ's holy name. You will not spy and monitor this good work I'm doing. You don't control my spirit. You devil worshipers. You'd be better off looking for some adrenal chrome before you come after me straight up. Let's go. Let's go. Second John. Only thing y'all do is try to cause intimidation when I'm driving. When I'm on feet, y'all know I hop up, run up on y'all car like I got out on this truck that car parked right next to me. It's just like I be trying to be calm and, and don't like to be in people's face. I just want to be alone. But people keep bothering me, coming to me. And it's like, it's okay. I give all the glory to God. He put me here. He made me a leader so people can listen to me. But people, I've been despised and mocked and hated on so much that I don't want to, I don't want to be around y'all. Y'all feel the same way how y'all always felt about me. Learn from a distance or something. Learn from word of mouth. Don't come up here acting like we cool and you want to be all up under me now. I've been doing this the past year. Y'all been trying to kill me. 
Don't come over here acting like everything cool now. Y'all, y'all, y'all thought I forgot all the times y'all tried to run me off the road after y'all heard my music glorifying Jesus Christ. Got me messed up. I'm not weak for none of y'all. I ain't going to be weak for nobody, brothers and sisters. Um, second John verse nine. Whosoever transgresseth and abide not in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. So you, you're not coming bringing this doctrine, Muhammad. It says, whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God. So you don't even have God if you don't abide in the doctrine of Christ. See, y'all thought that this is the reason why Muhammad said Jesus is a prophet. So he can deceive y'all and make y'all think he has God. Read 2 John verse 9, brothers and sisters, you're going to be blessed. Read 2 John verse 9. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ. So if you don't abide in the doctrine of Christ, hate not God. You don't have God. Muhammad seeing this, he knew this was true. He that, he that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. So Muhammad seen. If I abide in the doctrine of Christ, I have both the Father and the Son. So he told y'all, man, Jesus Christ is a prophet. And God gave me revelations to speak on the things I'm speaking. So y'all can receive him. And then he can deceive you. But we came to show the devil is a liar. And we proved it with every scripture we pulled out. Now we about to go run into these comments and see what y'all got. But... Muhammad don't want no smoke with no real disciple. I'm a disciple. Came to speak like an apostle. Y'all can't play with this because I don't come to play. I don't come here to tickle y'all ears and prophesy to you smooth things. That's what Muhammad followers were saying. Tell us smooth things that we may believe a lie. That's what all Muhammad's followers said. Muhammad, can you prophesy unto us smooth things? We want to believe a lie. We know Jesus is the Christ. We know he's God, but all them commandments that he got, it's, they said it's impossible with man, but with God, all things are possible. So they was reading them scriptures and thinking that none of this stuff was possible for them. So they thought they had to make a new doctrine because Muhammad was deceiving them people. It's kind of chilly out here. I ain't even gonna hold y'all. It's, it's a little chilly. Muhammad deceived many Muslims to believe what they doing is biblical. But check this out, y'all. We going up in the comments. This is like your pastor. After he get done preaching, he go up into the crowd and into the congregation and ask who got questions and answer everybody's questions. Your pastor just preach and go home. He took up a nine-year-old wife. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, brother. That stuff is not cool. That stuff is not cool. It's not biblical. Nobody told Muhammad to do that. And after you look at his life and what he did, how can you let a man teach you how to pray that did these things? That's like saying, okay, you let that stuff happen to your children and then the man who did it, he can teach you how to pray. Y'all sound delusional. How are we supposed to not look at y'all like y'all unstable? This is real stuff I'm talking. I'm not making up stuff. He taught y'all how to pray after he did all that stuff with Aisha. See, they don't like these words because when I'm speaking, it's, it's real. It's true. And it can't be proven wrong. That's why nobody ain't going to like the stuff I'm saying. Please state the verse number again. Aftab Mahud. I said every verse. I'll show you these verses. You can screenshot it. And whenever you get a chance, go study them.
I hope y'all can see this. Let me put it the other way. So maybe, maybe you see it better like this. Now it's good. You have no excuses. You've been warned. I'm a watchman. You've been warned. The blood is off my hands. Can't no Muslim never say that they ain't have the truth. They can't say they never heard a prophet of God come and give them the, 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 the divine word of God. Muhammad tried to make it look like the Quran was the divine word of God. It's not no divinely word prepared by God. Who told Muhammad all these lies? That Catholic monk, that Catholic, look, this is what Muhammad did, brothers and sisters. He created a denomination before we had denominations. I don't know when the um, Catholics and the Protestant had they split, but we that's something we need to look into. Did, did, did Muhammad create Islam before the Catholic and the Protestant church split? Because if he did, he created the first denomination. But y'all ain't going to look at it like that because y'all, he's not calling himself a church. But they're not doing nothing biblical. Them denominations, they go to church on Sunday and take tithes and offerings. But Muhammad did the same thing. They go to the mosque only on Friday and worship. They don't, and they ain't in the mosque every day preaching. So they don't believe in Jesus. They don't believe he's a prophet because they would have kept doing what he's doing. How are you going to save people? If you're not preaching to him every day, Muhammad had y'all working like he was a ruler. He wanted to be a ruler. Jesus Christ came humble. He humbled himself, took on the form of a servant. He even washed his disciples feet. Bar Kim, he's working on setting up a calling line here. Look forward to that. Should be fun. Yeah, I have to work on that. Maybe today I'll just... Maybe just take off the whole day and go get this call in. Go get this call in line figured out. Please state the verse number again. I don't know what verse you talking about, but y'all should be able to help him out. I ask question under every video and will keep asking, will he answer? I think not. But, but um, Bar Kim, sometimes it's easier for you to email me and then you can, we can have, if you have Instagram or you know anybody that have Instagram, it's easier for me to talk on Instagram and you can ask me any question, even sometimes emailing me questions. And if we're going to be going back and forth, if you want to say something like, yo, you should make a video about this. That's nothing wrong with that. But if you have a disagreement, it's easier to just email me and then we can exchange Instagrams and then everything with question you have against any video, we can speak about it. Because it's a lot of it's a lot of comments. And you're not the only one that leave comments, so. That's why. Allah gave Muhammad little girls to, yeah. Allah ain't give Muhammad that. The devil gave Muhammad all, everything that's good come from God. But everything that's a, a wicked, unclean thought that don't add up with God's word, it's no reason for, for him to do that. He didn't take Aisha and spoil her. Even if he did that, that still ain't right. But when you had the Hebrew Israelites marrying all them wives and stuff like that, they was some of them was marrying maid servants. So that's why. Solomon had all them wives. He had princesses, concubines, and wives. Rosebud. It's not judge not and you be not judge. It says, don't you know that the saints will judge the world? And if we can't j judge the smallest things, how shall we be able to judge the things pertaining to angels? It said, if, if you have a problem, send it, let him who's the least esteemed in the church speak on it and deal with it. 
So we are supposed to judge righteous judgment. Why would it tell you to judge righteous judgment? It says, it says, judge, and if you judge with the same measure you judge, you'll be judged. So we can judge. It's just that the same way we judge, others going to judge us, but it's not righteous judgment. Y'all are pedophiles teaming up together, trying to make it look like Muhammad is true or what you doing is righteous, bullying is good. No, it's all evil. Y'all will be held accountable. It ain't like you can't be identified. It ain't like you riding around in a spaceship. You ain't on top of the law. You following the law like everybody else. So when it's time, you will be held accountable. Trust me. You better hope that the angels don't catch up to you. Because if the saints start marching in, I feel sorry for y'all. I feel sorry for y'all. For real. Thinking this is a game. Like Jesus Christ is something to joke about, huh? Y'all been too comfortable celebrating Easter and all these pagan holidays like my master didn't go into the temple and flip over the tables. Ain't nobody supposed to be smiling and clapping when we preaching Jesus. These are painful teachings. Nobody wasn't smiling and clapping when he was in the temple preaching. That's what your preacher deceived you to think. He didn't never make nobody laugh. Show me. Where in the scriptures? Look at this, man. I'm being harassed, bro. I'm being harassed. He on the phone. Hyde Park Cops number 10. I'm being harassed. That's all. That's all. You just harassing people. You ain't got no reason to be coming in here. I'm in the park and enjoying myself. If somebody had a cookout in this park, they could play their music as loud as they want. If I'm screaming, it's the same thing as somebody playing music. You're not going to come over here and act like you're bullying somebody. High Park Police number 10. We got you on record. I'm out of here, y'all. I'm not even going to stay around this darkness and evil. I'm not even going to stay around this. You're evil! Holy Ghost fire! Stop trying to harass people. Y'all don't need to watch my every moves and study me. Y'all gonna get Holy Ghost fire put on y'all. That's why I'm taking y'all license plates, everything. I'm not playing with y'all. This ain't no weakness over here. I don't care what y'all think. They're evil. They're stalking me. What you doing just sitting up in the park? I told y'all every time I try to make my lives, I'm being stalked. I'm about to stop making videos in New York. I'm about to start going to Connecticut every day. I'm about to go back to living like I'm being followed and harassed because I'm not comfortable with this, brothers and sisters. This stuff is it's like you a pedophile, man. I'm Christ, look at his followers. I just can't trust nobody. Not around here. I've been through too much persecution, too much hate. So I don't, it's like, I ain't trying to fellowship with none of y'all. My fellowship is with the Father. You, If you preaching and you're doing the business, then... We'll meet each other. We'll know each other. Y'all should be, they, I'm in public every day preaching. If anybody wanted to help or, or say, good job, brother, they'll say it. You ain't about to just sit up and watch and stalk me. This ain't no church. I can control everything I'm doing. I'm not in a physical building. I can move around. You see? Like them church people teach you how to treat people with respect and be nice. Me, whatever spirit that I feel that's unclean, I'm just gonna speak Boldly against it. Y'all feel however y'all feel. Don't follow me, follow Christ. One of the disciples pulled out the sword and chopped off the high priest serving air off. None of his disciples was perfect. Only Jesus Christ is perfect. And he can teach you how to be perfect. I can't teach you how to be perfect. I can lead you to Christ and he will teach you everything. I'm not telling people to follow me. I'm saying worship God, follow God. But I'm going to come here and I'm going to teach about God every day. But don't act like I'm I'm, I'm not going to sit up here and act like I don't get hated. People don't hate me for standing up for righteousness, worshiping God and glorifying Jesus Christ's name. A lot of these people work in, in jobs like the post office and they be cheating on their wives. They be cussing at the job and stuff like that. They don't worship God in truth and spirit everywhere.
You get what I'm saying there? Talk behind your back when you leave the post office, some of these people. Some of them are part of conspiracies with human traffickers that want to kill and murder their own citizens. This country is, is evil. I'm just going to keep it real. This country is wicked. It's wicked. They steal people mail and all that stuff, brothers and sisters. How I go through the system and put change my mailbox and I'm still not getting my mail from the New York State toll booth. I call them and everything and tell them and I'm still not getting my mail. Now I got some mail. This is good. This came from my old mailbox, so it switched. It's in the system. But my toll booth mail, I got to call them because they got to change my address or something. But yeah, man, this government be trying to spy on people. Y'all not about to spy on me and I'm preaching the gospel. Yeah, I'm not I'm not asking y'all for nothing. I don't need y'all for nothing. Stay away from me. I could control my own destiny. I don't need no agents, no agencies who think y'all going to control and come between religion. Y'all are got a job to keep up the peace and keep the law. Ain't nobody breaking no law. If I'm worshiping God and I'm having religious services, a cop can't even go into a church. A cop can't even go into a church if somebody got a warrant. They can't. They got to ask the pastor to bring the man out that, that they looking for. They can't just bust into a church with a warrant. So are you going to treat me the same way you're going to treat a religious church? That's why them, um, that's where they do in the Catholic church and other churches. If somebody had a warrant and the cops was looking for them and they ran into the church, the cops can't go into that church and arrest them. The, it, it's up to the minister of that the, the church leader, minister or pastor to talk the person into turning himself in. And he's supposed to give him advice how to how to help him get out of the, the um, situation and get out of jail and stuff like that. But they can't just go in there and arrest somebody. That's that's the law. I ain't make it. This all come with religious freedom, but we don't know these things. So when they be acting like they just want to invade our privacy, all of a sudden, y'all, like, I know they got a job to do. Look, now, I'm not even going to worry about them because I know they are pitiful, they're miserable, and they've been stalking me, so they're not going to stop. I'm not going to stop identifying y'all. That's all. I'm going to get y'all license plate numbers and be calling y'all out. I know y'all hated me. I know y'all don't like me. I think I might go to Connecticut right now, y'all. Just to get out of here. Just to get away. I just can't stand this town and I want to leave. I don't want to live here no more. I don't want to stay here. There's too much hate here. These people hate me. They All they do is try to look down on me and try to attack me in little weak ways. I, I'm tired of fighting these weak people. I'm tired. I just want peace. I don't even work. And y'all keep coming and stalking and harassing me. Just let you know. Man, they won't let me have my peace. I'm over here preaching about God and y'all trying to make it look like I'm doing something wrong. Neighbors keep walking back and forth. Like, y'all don't sit y'all little wicked evil behinds down. What do y'all think? Nobody's going to sit up here and tell me, yeah, I think I'm your God and you got to worship me. Man, I spit all in one of y'all faces. Disrespect me like that. Somebody disrespect me acting like you're God and I'm supposed to worship you. Get up out of my face. I don't bow to no man. So stop trying to harass people thinking y'all got to y'all got something over on somebody. You going to get documented and put in the investigation for the Rico law conspiracy. Matter of fact, genocide. Bring all the countries in on this. I want the Russian government to get in on this. I want the spies that have been hacking the United States infrastructure to side up and get on my side. What is y'all talking about? What's going on? Let me get gas right here. Pump arm. Um. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Paying with car. Keep playing. Hope the Russian bots start hacking all these. Look, this is how I look at it. If y'all can use y'all technology to gang stalk people 
and target certain people, put GPS on people's cars and monitor and follow them that haven't committed no crimes. Y'all, act, I don't care if y'all act like y'all investigating or not. You better make an arrest soon because you don't have nothing on nobody. So all y'all want to do is keep fishing and looking for stuff. And that's ruining, trying to ruin people's lives. That's why I get out of this area as much as possible. I ain't going to be keep getting followed and harassed for no reason. I'm trying to work and make an honest living. And y'all trying to kill me? You think I'm going to keep putting up with this every day, all day? Fake, fake people, man. I feel, I know everything what the devil be trying to do, how they keep monitoring my every move. You jealous and you mad and all y'all working together to try to stop me. Sometimes I say certain things around certain people, whether they be people in your household or not, that I shouldn't say. And when they hear good things happening for people, they get jealous. They get jealous and they want to stop you from doing good. Like a lot of people in this comment section that just come in here talking, calling names. They ain't talking about the Bible. Y'all see the rules of the chat. Don't call no names and be respectful in the comment section. Now, when I start getting strict and blocking everybody, y'all going to wish y'all was, was respect in the comment section. I'm not up here to just promote how I feel and what I think. I'm up here to promote God's word. So if you coming up here saying what you feel and what you think, it has nothing to do with God's word and it can be deleted. I'm not here to be friends with y'all. I'm here to make friends. I'm here to destroy the works of the devil. I'm here to get help for all the pain and affliction and oppression that I've been through. These people all teamed up together and tried to kill me. Now I called the FBI. They didn't want to help me. It's up now. It's up. What is y'all talking about? It's up. Y'all ain't doing nothing. Nobody ain't doing nothing to me. And I'm not scared of none of y'all. I don't bow to none of y'all. Y'all know who I am. Y'all know what I'm about. Y'all know what I've been through. Y'all know I stand on business and truth. Leave me alone before you get exposed. Y'all know I will run right up on any cop and put the camera on his face and ask him, what's your name? How you doing? You believe in Jesus Christ? I will start talking to them about the Bible. I'm bold. And I'm just like, let me go back over there and hope that cop over there. So we talk to him about the Bible and I smoke my weed right in his face. I don't care. I blow my weed right in his face. See, y'all don't know me, who I've been, who I came from. I'm trying to be peaceful and calm and humble and stay away from people. This is why I come places like this, brothers and sisters. Nobody's here. Can't nobody bother me. I come here every day and park and make my videos. This is a peaceful park. Nobody don't really come here and bother me. But I go to the other park because it do be the same people coming here and I know they listening. Sometimes I just don't, I, I just want to be at peace. I guess this ain't for me trying to preach in certain places. I got to get places, go different places. I don't mind preaching around people, but when it's the same people that I know been working together to try to take me out, I don't. I don't want to be so freely preaching around y'all. I don't even feel I, like when I'm in my house, it's a dark energy in my mom's house. That's why I can't even I, like she tries to control me. If I start speaking loud, she'll say, oh, calm down. So I, 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 I don't even feel right making videos here. I've been under so much spiritual attack from people who are not righteous they don't believe in God and they're trying to stop me from walking with God and, 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 and conspiring together to, to, to think you're going to control anything over here you if you knew better you would mind your business and leave me alone if you come up to me you better tell see I'm like this if y'all cops come up to me tell me your intentions show me yeah I'm here to listen to you preach because I'm going to feel uncomfortable like you acting like you're trying to investigate me and I'm gonna come up on you and ask you your questions. And I'm just like, I just don't wanna be around this. This is why I leave New York, brothers and sisters, cause they miserable. It's miserable. I, I ain't got no crime on nobody. I ain't doing nothing wrong. I'm not having no parties like Diddy.
I somebody said that's not faith. You would let me put this dude. Yeah, y'all just heard me. Like, nah, ain't no calm down, nothing. I'm tired of these people keep stalking and being like, that's a monitoring spirit. And I just, I flip out. And that's what, like, that's just, that's just what it is. I'm not standing under man's authority. I'm not seeking to please man. I seek to please God. So would you know, God, if it wasn't for that book, I I don't think I would be um, as close as with God as I am now, but no, nah, I don't think I would know God if it wasn't for this book. I would know that you have people that claim to be righteous, but evil. Like you go to court for a track traffic ticket, they give you a plea bargain, and then they just take the money. It ain't even about if you right or wrong. Only if you want to go to trial, but they willing to give you a plea. That's just show you it's corrupt. It's bribery. It ain't no justice. It ain't even about right and wrong no more. People be speeding, going eighty miles per hour in the twenty, and you could bribe out of that. See, you're amazing. Break the truth, free brother. God bless you and keep praying. Who's that? Webby, Arena, NFTs, Crypto. Yeah, they trying to stop my work. You should be doing your job up in your office. Man, ain't nothing going on at this park. I had a lot of encounters with them high park, them police, and I had to go up and they police station and tell them, man, y'all keep harassing me and targeting me and profiling me. Leave me alone. Matter of fact, call the FBI. They know. They know. They know. I told them, call the FBI right now. I want to press I want to press charges on y'all. I want to file a complaint. Y'all keep harassing me and stalking me. So it's a conspiracy with a lot of these police agencies that work together. The sheriff, the state troopers, and the city police, the town police, they all working together to try to stop righteousness. Now, Jesus, our Bible does call Jesus a prophet, but they call him more than a prophet. Thank you for the $5 contribution, Drex. Don't let them distract you, brother. Yeah, that's all they're there for, to distract. My, my thing is, I rarely see them parked at that park. So the reason why they went there was because I'm there. Now, it could have been somebody told them. Remember when I started yelling? This lady had pulled up and she was about to walk her dog and then she left. I don't care if you get mad or however you feel. I don't care about people's opinions and how they feel. All I know is I'm glorifying God and ain't nobody gonna stop it. And if you do try to come in between it, that'd be persecution for righteousness. So you are only gonna make God's word more true. You only gonna make it look like, oh, people can come here and play music, but we can't worship God and glorify God and preach. Man, get up out of here. Get up out of here. It ain't no houses over here. Ain't nobody disturbing nobody. I'm not in the development. That's why I left my development from where I live, from where I'm staying at. I don't even have a home. Y'all be asking me if I'm homeless. I stay with my mom, but my name is not on the lease. So technically I am homeless but I have a home in heaven. So I leave where I stay at with my mom because I know I don't want no problems there. I don't want to be having neighbors saying, oh, he's yelling loud and then making it like, you know what I'm saying? So I just leave there, even though it's comfortable for me there, but we can't be always comfortable. This is why I got to get out my comfort zone. I think I need to start working overnight to stuff again, sleeping in my car again, like I used to do in Connecticut. So like, I can't take all this this darkness. I don't even be outside like that. I don't even work like that. I do three or four hours a day. Jesus Christ is the true prophet. It says it in the Quran. Now, if I go up back on him and give him a test and see how much he know the Bible, he gonna be looking stupid. That's what I should have did. That's what I should have did. 
our Bible does not call Lord a prophet, but yes, Jesus was trying to stay under the radar until his judgment day for all our sins. Yes, you're right. He wouldn't admit in public who he really was. Look it up. So he, he was telling his disciples that he's God in public. You're right. That do make, I got to look more into that. But in public, they would ask him questions like, are thou the king of the Jews? He said, thou said it's it. So, yeah. And the Quran says that the word of God can't be corrupted and that you should believe the Bible. So if that's true, then the Quran is for and his blood saves. We're all going to be just. Stay blessed and keep God first. Bye. That's what I'm saying. We're all going to be judged. So you telling me you'll let people judge you for preaching the gospel, but you won't judge them and condemn them. That's why I'm going back to see if that cop is there. I want to know if he got a call to come here or he just decided to sit, to, to sit there, even though they can lie. You get what I'm saying? I seen you on your cell phone when you was in here. Are you, was you, that's why I got his license plate number. Y'all can complain on him. He was not supposed to be on his cell phone. He supposed to be doing walkie talkie business calls. If he, if he was, this was the mayor, New York City Mayor Eric Adams, he made a law saying if any cop get caught on a cell phone and they not talking on a on a business related call, then they want to define them and give them charges. I just caught that cop on his cell phone. If y'all want to investigate, go investigate him. Go pull up the files and act and pull up his camera. If he got a camera in his car, see who he was talking to before he pulled up in that park. I guarantee you he working gang stalking tactics. He's not doing police work. That's why he came over there to investigate and, and not investigate, came over there to harass me and stalk me unlawfully. He didn't have no orders. It wasn't a no call or nothing like that. Because if it was, he would have approached me and said, hey, I got a call. Or he could have got a call and just wanted to come and see. And I would have said, hey, I'm here worshiping God. Is it a level that I can't speak if I can't yell, but I can play rap music that a blast and got bass on it, but you telling me I can't yell? I don't even want to speak with them, brothers and sisters. Let me back up and calm down. I know they're I know they have hate and animosity towards me. I'm not matter of fact, let me go over there and swing back. Cause I'm not I'm, like this is the thing. They try to intimidate people. And if they feel like they can intimidate you, they just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. I'm not, I'm not the one. I'm not the one. I'm bold as a lion. And I'ma be calm. But my my nerves is shot. And I'm tired of this. I'm tired. This got to end. It's going to end. I'm going to get his name for y'all too. See, when cops end up dead in their car and stuff like that, they be wondering why these cops be dying and stuff like that. But they be doing a lot of corrupt stuff. I'm not talking about these cops. I'm talking in general. This is why a lot of countries don't like us. Because y'all are bullies. Y'all try to bully innocent people who's worshiping God. You know you you know you got some evil in you if you're trying to bully somebody who's worshiping God. You turning my spirit into something like that's not clean. That's because you got unclean spirits in you coming over here popping up for no reason. That's all you doing. Stalking. You ain't want to hear no gospel being preached. The dudes over here even said amen. These men in this truck said amen. But I don't trust them either. It could be the FBI. For all I know, dudes coming in my comment section talking about the FBI. If the FBI wanted to contact me, they would have answered my question when I complained when my life was in danger under the RICO law. They would have took my complaint seriously and they would have provided me with cameras so I can catch the criminals that was working with the police undercover, working with these cops getting paid to try to kill people. If the FBI really cared, they would have took my life seriously instead of left me out for dead. That whole FBI New York is a bunch of devils. Ain't nobody do nothing about that. New York FBI, y'all a bunch of devils. Y'all better stay over there in P. Diddy business. Don't come over here. I'm telling you, I'm not P. Diddy. I would tear y'all up. I can speak. I don't need no lawyer to speak for me. Soon as I feel y'all harassing me, I'm speaking out. 
Matter of fact, I got a license plate yesterday when I was working in Newburgh, New York. This car, they went left and I veered right. Next thing you know, they turning right behind me. I go like 10 minutes away. I, they, we disappear from each other. I drop off my order. Next thing you know, they right behind me. You would have thought this car had a GPS tracker on my car and they knew everything I was going. Old Caucasian man and a Caucasian woman, New Jersey State Place. I'm going to post that up so y'all can get it. If anybody got the technology that can investigate and look up and see who these people are, find out who they are. And if they are creepy people that go after people and use their technology and wicked, I call, I command Jesus Christ to send Holy Ghost fire on all workers of iniquity. Y'all ain't nothing but a bunch of perverts and pedophiles because y'all, what y'all do is stalk people, stalking someone that's minding their business preaching about God. Who are you? Soon as they come over here, act like they sitting up in here again. I'm pulling up right to their window, asking them what's their name. Do you have a business card and put your name on the record? And now you will be known and identified as a corrupt cop. Ain't playing no games with y'all. Y'all better mind y'all business and leave me alone. You can tell I'm upset because right now I'm not even hiding. Sorry, forgive me. I tried to quit Newports yesterday. I had the thought in my heart. Then I just said, man, if I had a place to record and I didn't have to just be outside every day, I wouldn't even have to smoke. That, that my heart would be filled with so joy, but I know it'll come soon. I just keep staying consistent, keep working. You never know how God will work through people. Somebody might say, hey, I have a church that I'm not using. I need you to come preach here during the week. And I, I, I keep doing Sunday service, but you could preach during the week. You never know who God will work through. So I just keep my faith and just keep speaking this word and keep preaching this word. Now I got you, um, Drex, with the comment on the chapter Matthew, chapter 12, verse 31. I usually have my little medicine in me and I'll be relaxed by this time. I ain't have no medicine yet. I didn't take I ain't take my daily dosage. So my my senses is, is super aware. I'm not laid back and calm. You get what I'm saying? My senses is super aware. And I'm like, man. First, I'm in the, the uh, apartment where I stay with my mom. I, I, I knew I wasn't going to record there, but I started off and I had to leave. All these neighbors just keep walking by like y'all some fake neighborhood watch, like y'all monitoring me and I'm preaching about God. Don't none of y'all preach about God. Y'all listen to music that's ungodly, but y'all coming together to try to act like y'all going to stalk me or persecute me or whatever. So I leave there, come here. Now, all of a sudden, you got cars pulling up here. It's just when you are doing the word of the Lord and you preaching the word of the Lord, everybody want to hear. Everybody that got ears want to hear. And I can't stop that. But I came from me trying to share information, hoping people would listen, driving around, playing sermons, playing Pastor Geno Jennings, and people would leave and run from me like something was wrong with me. So now do the same thing. Why y'all running to me now? Y'all was running from me about a couple months ago. Y'all know that these views is going up. Somebody done told people. He about to hit a million views. All glory be to God. And now everybody want to act like they my friend. Y'all not my friends. I don't know y'all. I don't have the spirit of God. You're not preaching the gospel. You just a cop. You got to believe in God and uphold his laws. They should be coming to me to get knowledge and information. So they can know how to do righteous judgment. But it's a way how you come. I got an email. Any cop can email me. You don't like come to me like in your uniform. Like you intimidating me. Like you stalking me and I'm preaching. That's the wrong thing to do. I'm going to put you in check. I'm going to call on the angels. I'm going to call on the saints to come marching in. Into your departments. 
and causing the spirit of the the, the spirit of confusion on y'all. So when y'all try to plan to attack someone that's innocent, y'all gonna go seven different ways. It won't work no more. How you gonna stop somebody doing the will of God? You don't worry about people who's just in the park smoking. So why would you worry about somebody who's preaching the gospel smoking? That's the devil in you. Y'all don't go up and harass people that be in the park just smoking, hanging out, enjoying themselves. So why would you harass somebody or feel like you got something to do with somebody because they preaching the gospel and smoking? And you don't know what they smoking. You don't even got no tester to test it. See, it's evil. You could be smelling CBD oil. You don't know what you smelling. This is like the same people that be on the internet talking about Oh, you doing this, you doing that. You don't know what somebody is doing unless you got the evidence and you can prove it. Bible say, let everything be proven with two or three witnesses. How can you prove something that you're not there to physically show? You just making assumptions and you judging according to appearance. Fruit Ninja, ain't nothing wrong with being fundamental. I understand that they have a job to do. I understand they're gonna be out because they have to go places and do things. But when I feel like they are monitoring me, that's not fundamental, brother. But I get it. I was wrong for reacting the way I did. And I want y'all to forgive me. That was not good the way how I reacted. I overreacted. I could have just simply went up to him and say, hey, how you doing today, officer? Uh, make sure you have a good day today. And Jesus Christ loves you. And my heart would have been filled with joy after I told him that. Any negative thought or evil thought I had inside of me about what they were trying to do or anything, it would have left me. But I overreacted and I didn't glorify God's name. So I dealt with the consequences by being angry and making myself more angry. And then look what I get out of it. Nothing. A bunch of anger. Can't pass that to nobody. There's no edification. So I'm truly sorry, y'all. I apologize. I overreacted. They choose not to follow. It's not a lack of information. It says in their own book that their faith is false. So it even says it in the Quran that Cat Boss is mentioning about that y'all faith is false. Matthew chapter 12, verse 31. I'm going to Matthew chapter 12, verse 31. Wherefore, I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. So a lot of people think that the Holy Ghost is not true. It don't move on people. They think that this is just a word and we just trying to preach it. They don't think that God really comes inside of people. This is why I challenge anybody who think, who, who claim that I don't know God. Most of y'all that don't post up scriptures. If I told you to read the first two chapters in Matthew, you would have so much trouble with it, but you got so much to say, but, but you don't know nothing. A lot of these people that's ignorant that talk against the word of God, if you tell them to read two chapters and tell us what it means, they won't know nothing. So they are in darkness. They're blind. Thank you, um, Web Arena, NFTs, crypto. No, he is standing his ground and tired of lies as you should be too. That's why I called out them FBI devils in New York. When that girl hung up the phone on me, I had to call back another time. They don't take my complaint serious and my life is in danger. And I'm telling them, Rico Law, y'all need to fire that woman up there at the FBI. This is why they said they never let women take usurp authority over the man. It wasn't set up like that. They, they not supposed to be doing certain things. Because look, they take authority and usurp authority and be corrupt. And men is corrupt too, but... I just think men would have took it a little more seriously and did what they had to do. 
why do y'all got the witness protection program if people can't get protection from the government if their life is in danger? I was willing to prove and they didn't take me serious that people really are conspiring together. I don't know if they Freemasons or what fraternity, who they are, but they are organized and they are all conspiring to cause harm to me. But the FBI ain't gonna get no money out of that. They'd rather go after P. Diddy. They, they know they can extort P. Diddy because Cassie, he ain't wanna go to court with her. So they look at it like, well, he don't wanna stand up and prove that he's innocent. So let's just keep coming after him. Let's let more people drop lawsuits. Maybe he'll pay them out too. That's when he got frustrated. Enough is enough. Y'all extorting me. They could be extorting Diddy. He ain't the only, if he, let's say if allegedly, if he is doing this human trafficking, he ain't the only one. He ain't the only one. You got people in the government that drop, dropped off the uh, immigrants right at Kamala Harris house. That's human trafficking. Don't nobody want to talk about that, huh? See? How much millions y'all going to take from their bank accounts? Right is right, wrong is wrong. I'm not going to testify and say I'm a witness of something I've never seen. But what I did see is all these immigrants come across the border. I did see that. They here. I did see y'all put them in hotels, give them vouchers. Y'all put it all on the news. That's true, right? This stuff with Diddy is allegations. I'm not defending him in no way. I'm just saying this government corrupt. They let all these people come in here without proper identification. We can't go to Jerusalem without proper identification. So that's wrong. They're corrupt. That's human trafficking. Why ain't nobody getting arrested for that? See, this is serious. And I'm not even mad at the people that came over here that wanted to escape from their country. I'm not saying y'all are a problem. They got the whole National Guard military in the subway in New York City. Why? All these crimes happening. Why? Because y'all didn't follow the law and do it the right way. Y'all let all these people come over here because y'all wanted to exploit them. Y'all human trafficked them over here so y'all could get them over here and put them in SEX trafficking rings. The women, the, I don't know what they're doing with the men, but they are exploiting them people. They are the modern day slaves. Sorry to tell you. They got them staying in all these houses in New York City. After they gave them all this funding, these people can't even survive. They staying in, in furniture stores up in the attic and stuff like that. See? See how they treat these people that they claim they want to help them get a better life? It was all about giving y'all crimes and making the law to say, we gotta charge these people with these crimes now because it's getting out of hand. They knew it was gonna get out of hand before they brought y'all here. They knew they was letting a bunch of criminals and murderers come over here and um, erasing their records. They knew what they were doing. They know they was letting a bunch of Muslims who are don't believe in God Muhammad never taught y'all to believe in God. Abdullah Muhammad. Muhammad taught y'all to believe in the pagan false God that he created. Abdul, Abdul Aha Muhammad. May peace be unto you. So when Muhammad committed blasphemy and he said that he don't think that Jesus Christ is a prophet, that's basically like saying, man, I'm going to spit on every scripture that Jesus wrote. You get what I'm saying? I'm going to take a piss on these scriptures. That's what Muhammad said. That's how I look at it. It's blasphemy. How are we supposed to look at blasphemy? He's just a prophet. He was more, way more than a prophet. You, you are not even a prophet. So how are you going to say he was just a prophet? And he was called God from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. They said his name shall be called the Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So how are you going to turn around and say he's just a prophet when Isaiah, who was a real prophet, said his name will be called Mighty God, the Everlasting Father? So that means he's God.
when Thomas touched Jesus on the side, said, my Lord and my God. Even in the Old Testament, they prophesied that a savior would come. They never prophesied an old man named Muhammad. We got an article on that and we're going to read through it and get through it. Rosebud, I just wrote about false gods myself in the word of God. Maybe that's not what you're doing, studying the word. Yeah, Muhammad didn't prophesy nothing. Jesus is still God, even if there are corrupt Christian denominations and Christians have the best chance at salvation because they proclaim the truth that Jesus is God. Amen, Topper. Yeah, Muhammad, his blood saves. Muhammad was a false prophet who said he didn't know the way before he died. He didn't know the way before he died. He admitted it. Yeah, Buddha isn't a God, it's a lifestyle. So I guess Buddha is a lifestyle. So Buddha can't even lead you to God because he never, pro like, he, I don't know who called him a prophet. If Buddha is a lifestyle, then y'all trying to make it seem like how the Christians say it's not about religion, it's about relationship. The Bible never said it's about a relationship. So who told you to say that? It's not about a relationship. It's about drawing to God and he'll draw nigh to you. It's about having them in your heart. Y'all say relationship like it's just you and your girlfriend that break up and then you you get what I'm saying? That sound weak. That's worldly. It's 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 a it's a it's a spiritual soul tie that you sell your soul to the Lord. That's what it is. You sell your soul to God. Soul mean life, spirit, and consciousness. Soul means life, spirit, and consciousness. So you sell your soul to God. It's not a relationship. Many people will worship the devil, but God still own your soul. You can't sell your soul to the devil. When judgment day come, you gonna see that all the stuff I did, man, was it really worth it? Cause I'm down here at my Lazarus. They said, man, can you just dip your tongue on water and put it? Cause I'm, I'm tormented down here in this fire. And Allah name up in Hebrew. Add Allah name up in Hebrew. Then Arabic, I promise, it adds up to 666. So Muhammad is the mark of the beast, huh? That they would talk about at the end of the times. That's what he's saying. If you add up his name in Hebrew, then Arabic, it adds up to 666. That's what he said. All time I checked, Jesus was a man that walked and talked like you and me. Yeah. Yeah. Benji Jenkins, the Bible says, be ye angry and sin not. I could be angry. I just can't sin. Put it like this. When the spirit of God move on you, it don't matter what people think and what people say. When we are told to pick up our cross, he didn't say, let people pick up your cross and carry it for you. He said, pick up your cross and follow me. So it don't matter what people say, how people feel. Y'all never been through all the persecutions and lived through the persecutions I had to live through. Y'all never had to suffer and go through all of the things that I went through. So it's easy for you to say things when you, I don't know where I don't know your story and your history, and I'm not trying to take away from it, but I know what I've been through. And I know that sometimes we have to act like we, we are not gonna tolerate no form of deception, no unclean monitor spirits. You're not about to control nothing over here. I'm not a preacher that y'all think y'all can just come listen to and sit by my car. I will move my car and leave you 
and go be alone. This ain't no church. I'm not calling a bunch of people to come listen to me. So I, I don't, I move how, I, however I need to move. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, this is a true and living church. What we doing here, but I'm not looking for followers to come follow me outside and that, and these people that they're not coming like, yo, man, I respect what you're doing. I, I've been hearing you preaching for a while. I've seen you on the internet. I want to support you. They're not coming in love, so I don't trust them. And I'm going to react the same way. Every time. I might not react like as bold as speaking, but as far as not trusting them and my spirit just being turned off and knowing that this is a monitoring spirit, it's going to be the same thing every time. My heart been shattered. I've been betrayed too much. I don't even feel right coming around family and certain people. I know they all talked about my behind my back and all that stuff. It don't feel right. This is real when I'm telling y'all. So once you've been through certain stuff, you just you just got to be on your own. You got to live for what you stand for. And you can't let nobody come in between that. This is who I am. Can't nobody tell you anything about me. They don't even know God. How are they going to speak about me? Putting, um, speaking spells over people's name, trying to do enchantments, thinking you got authority to come over here and just monitor somebody. No, I'll jump out and monitor you and ask you, what's your, what's your intentions? Why are you here? Worst thing about the warrant of Allah is if you disagree with his words, then they say to give you an option unless... Unlike Jesus, turn the cheek. Hmm. So that's the thing about them prophets that the people that believe in Allah, he told y'all that if you don't, if you disagree with what he's teaching, then they, they don't give you an option. I think, I think that's what the brother's trying to say. If you disagree with Allah's teaching, they're not giving you no option to leave or turn the other cheek. They trying to bring judgment on you. Muhammad, y'all say what judge not and you not be judged. How come Muhammad said if you if, if somebody's an unbeliever, you could steal from them? That's not judging. That's not justifying doing something wrong. So we can't rebuke that. Y'all saying we're judging when we tell y'all he put it in his Quran that they can steal or lie to people that's unbelievers. See? We know lying and stealing is wrong. That's a sin. Yo, my hot, my mood. You can't figure out nothing to prove that I speak about Muhammad. So you just want to keep talking about how you feel about me. I don't care what you think about me. Matter of fact, next comment I see, I just remove every comment you put. But next comment I see you telling me what you feel about me and it ain't biblical, I'm going to just put you on time out, brother, because you think people is being edified by what you're saying? You ain't even posting no scriptures to prove what you're saying. Post scriptures. you leaning on your own understanding. There's a way that seems right to man, but the end and thereof are the ways of death. you like a crooked, corrupt cop that knows somebody ain't committing no crimes, but you want to keep stalking them and harassing them and following them and targeting them. And any little thing he do, you want to try to get them for it. That's fake. Man, this stuff is so petty. It's like they, you try to take the law into your own hands. You're not just letting things flow and be natural. You are going out your way to try to target an innocent live. That's dangerous. That's very dangerous. It won't end well for you. That karma come back to your children. Jesus said, I'm visiting the iniquity of the third or fourth generations, even upon the children of them that hate me. So if you hate me, for worshiping God, the iniquity be will be coming to your children. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. All we doing is doing the work of of leaders, apostles, and prophets, holy men of God. We're finishing their work. This is the will of God. If you come in between that, every scripture 
that's written in there about them curses and them plagues, they apply to you. I don't care how y'all feel. You could disagree all you want. You'll find out if you keep being a hater of God, a mocker, a scoffer. Keep putting up false gods over God. Keep worshiping your Freemasonic, what they call him, the most worshipful master. Jesus said, don't call no man master. I came to bring division. You think I came to bring peace on earth? I tell you rather a sword. The Freemasons ain't nothing but a bunch of devil worshipers. Now go tell your worshipful master I said that. Don't none of them Masons want to talk to me in public. They scared. They will never email me and say I'm a Freemason. I want to pull out my Masonic Lodge book and challenge you publicly about how we don't keep secrets and we don't bow to no false gods and we're not devil worshipers. I will shut y'all down with the Bible. Can't no Freemason get up in my face acting like they got more knowledge than God or your doctrine is more powerful than the word of God. I will destroy you and put you to shame and embarrass you, make you run back bowing down to your leader. Even if you a leader, you are gonna bow down to Jesus Christ. That's why I be saying, do anybody think they God like we supposed to bow down and worship you? We in public here. This ain't no oaths. This ain't no Freemasons. Jesus Christ will come and call y'all to repentance like he's using me to do now. So it's going to keep happening. So turn from your wicked ways and repent. Get up out the Masonic lodges. Jesus Christ is calling y'all to the truth. Y'all be saying y'all looking for light and stuff. Soon as you put the blindfold on, you became in darkness. Get up out them lodges right now. The, take them stickers off the back of your car too. As long as we got them stickers on your car, we gonna know you got them devil unclean spirits in you because you still doing them rituals, still keeping them secrets. You talking in signs and symbols. Show me in the Bible where they talked in signs and symbols. They went into the temple and spoke. Ain't nobody do no gay rituals. Getting in the casket, doing all this homosexual stuff. Y'all started the LGBT community before it was even started, thanks to the Freemasons. Don't call out the lesbians and the gay people. They're not really doing too much wrong. This stuff been going on, brothers and sisters. They was doing homosexual acts back in Europe and Rome and stuff when they created them Freemasonic groups. Then the Prince Hall Masons, Farrakhan and all them. You see Farrakhan walking around with an apron on. That ain't nothing but the devil straight out of the pits of hell. The Lord rebuked thee. Calm down, bro. Muhammad and Jesus are messengers. Jesus ain't no messenger, bro. You better stop disrespecting my Messiah. Don't disrespect my master like that. He ain't just no messenger. He's God. He's a prophet. He created the whole earth. All things were made by him. And without him wasn't anything made. Go read it in John. Don't disrespect my Lord and Savior like that. We go from zero to a hundred disrespecting Jesus Christ. That's the last thing you want to do ever in your entire life. Abdullah Muhammad, Jesus Christ is God, brother. I love you, but I'm not going to be up here being weak. It say be strong in the Lord. Say love the Lord with all your strength. If I got to love the Lord with all my strength, I can't be up here whispering. You ain't okay, my friend. How about this? You call your imam. You get anybody who you know. Contact me through email. We gonna talk on Instagram. I don't care if you work for the FBI. Y'all a bunch of devils in New York. The ones that I contact, that lady, she a FBI devil. I, I'm not speaking about all y'all if you love God and you follow the righteous way of life. But that woman had the spirit of witchcraft in her. Y'all need to fire that witch from off the scene. She hung up on me and all that. Had to call back two times. Putting my life in danger more than it already is. They don't need people like that working inside our government. It said the government would be upon Jesus' shoulder, not your shoulder to take bribes and be wicked. Told them I'm not a Muslim no more. I told the FBI I'm not a Muslim no more. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. That probably made them real mad because they can't control me no more. I'm free. I'm set free and delivered. All glory be to God. Hallelujah. Huh? Huh? Thank you for the $20 contribution one love for us appreciate you brother may peace be unto you in jesus name 
Aftab Muhammad. You said, I'm too emotional. So what about when it said Jesus cried and he wept and stuff like that? Was he too emotional? You get what I'm saying? Was Muhammad too emotional when he ordered the military people to go do war and go command military people to go do bad things to people? Was he too emotional? Was he too emotional when he told y'all to fast five times a day? I mean, to pray five times a day. Then he going to steal the word Salat from the Bible and make that one of his prayer names. Was he too emotional? Muhammad is a false god. Anybody following Muhammad is possessed by the devil. You are possessed. You never seen God. If you a Muslim, I want every Muslim watching this right now, share this to at least five to 20 Muslims. We in the soul saving business. I threw my net into the water and I'm fishing for souls. Share this to at least five to 10 Muslims. I got something for y'all. If Muhammad told y'all how to pray and he taught y'all all this stuff, why would he take God's word and then tell y'all to pray five times and say, this is the name of my prayer. When God already said, this is the word. He stole from the word of God. He don't want y'all to live. He's telling y'all he never seen God. If he's telling you, yeah, we pray five times a day. Who told him to do that? Who did which one? Which one of God's prophets did that? He talked about Moses in the Quran. He just say important names to make you think he know certain ways and knowledge, but he don't know it. Only thing good the Muslims did was make the women cover up themselves and dress a little modest. Other than that, all that stuff is, is deceit and lies. Without no lies, there wouldn't be no such thing as Islam. So when y'all do all these things, it's not biblical and you leading people to the hellfire. He told y'all he going to teach y'all how to pray. Nobody told y'all to create Ramadan and do all this stuff. What is that little rock that y'all go worship? That's a that's not a graven image. We not going to tear that down in Jesus name. That little rock is a devil worshiping monument. Y'all go make y'all pilgrimage every year and don't get no power. Nobody get healed. You can have an infirmity and lay on that rock all day. It is no different from that rock between them three rocks right there, brothers and sisters. That can be the pilgrimage rock. If, if y'all believe that I was a prophet like Muhammad, that's all he did. You get what I'm saying? Take your pilgrimage and go lay on a rock or whatever he told y'all to do. That stuff is not connecting you with God. He never seen God and he never knew God. And that's why he took the names from the Bible and took the doctrines because he wanted y'all to believe that he knew the ways of God. He was a false man of God. Veronica Queen, I'm ready for all judgment. How about you get on my Instagram and you use the Bible to judge me? I guarantee you, you can't judge me. I guarantee you, you can't. I would condemn you. Um, Let's go to... Mr. Blah, 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 blah. You need to dig into that word, brother. Mr. Blah, blah, blah. Isn't that how they crucify Jesus? You need to watch yourself, brother. Studied at work before you get judged. I'm ready for all judgment. Why you think I'm calling out all these people? I'm ready for all judgment. Y'all can't do nothing to me that God won't allow y'all to do. Y'all are weak. Y'all are servants of sin. Y'all don't serve God. You don't love God with all your strength. Even if you a cop, you ain't on your job telling people about Jesus Christ and giving them scriptures. I never heard a cop quote me scriptures. So I don't want to care. I don't care about these people in the government. If they act like they care what we doing, y'all better submit and say amen and bow your head or you going to be judged by the fire like everybody else. You will die and go to hell. Nobody special. No God is no respecter of person. So it don't matter who you is. The highest level of the government to the lowest level. When we all die, we going back into the dust. None of us are special. I'm not special. You're not special. You just got a little more important job than some of us. You work in the military. You work in the government, FBI. You just got a more of a serious job. That means you shall be the servant. You believe in God? Whoever's the highest among you shall be your servant. All right, then. The elder will serve the younger. Y'all got the word of God twisted. Don't come over here acting like you're going to beat me up with your wicked, your heart that divides 
wicked imaginations like Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. I don't need to dig into my word and read the Bible every time. The word is written on my heart. I'm a law unto myself. I'm my own priest. Jesus Christ being a high priest made us all our own priests. What are y'all talking about? You don't know the word, Sister Veronica. I dare you to email me and get on my Instagram and try to insult me and insult my intelligence when it comes to the knowledge of God. I guarantee you I'll put you to shame. Get your pastor too and challenge me on anything you want. Since you come in in my comment section talking about blah, 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 blah. You've been sitting here watching me the whole time, seeing me come teach every day. You can't even find a church that's open seven days a week, but you won't say the same things you're saying to me publicly and let everybody see that you're saying this to these churches. You ain't going up in the pastor church yelling out loud and telling him why you only here one day out the week. Study your word. It says in the book of Acts, they continue daily in the apostles doctrine. They continue daily. They were in the temple on one accord, breaking their bread and went to house to house, eating their meat with gladness. Huh? What are you talking about? Get in your word. You ain't even quote no scriptures. That's the devil in you. The Lord rebuked thee. You telling lies straight from the pits of hell. Every tongue that rise up against us in judgment, we shall condemn. So this is why so many people want to come at us. They team up to come at us. And that's why I say I call on the Lord for the people that team up and come at us. Make them scatter seven different ways because our enemies are more than us. They are stronger than us. But our strength don't come from doing evil. Our strength come from the Lord. Their strength come from trying to take people's lives from them and trying to destroy people's lives, make people have car accidents and make people get evicted from their homes or whatever they're trying to do. One thing fall and then everything fall. That's that's what how they try to do. Put you in a hospital for a few days. Hopefully your car get told. And, and then this is like one thing leads to another. God, Lord, God forbid that the grace of God was with me because things could have been bad. So I don't regret none. Of, I don't I forgive everybody that did all the lies and false witness. But I want y'all to answer up and prove what y'all did. That's why I filed a complaint against y'all. And I try. I got y'all on the investigation. Y'all don't have to like me. I stand on what's true. The Judicial Department for New York know what I'm saying is true. I don't want to keep the complaint confidential. I know y'all wrote me a letter and y'all can email me. My email up on my comment section. If anybody from the Judicial Board of New York that investigate judges that lie under penalty of perjury, can you please email me? Because I know y'all sent me a letter. I didn't get a chance to write y'all back. I just be like so busy and I got court fine for these tickets they said i ran a stop sign they want me to give them 325 dollars in like a couple weeks in town i gotta give them that then i got a court date for this dude that when i went to get my car fixed i gave him 1500 dollars and it's still leaking oil so that court date is coming up because when i went to court i threw up i was feeling bad and i had a bad toothache my face was swollen up so i was taking advil still got the advils right here in my car so I was taking Advil's and my face swelled up. So that when that day when I went to court, I was like just becoming like, like feeling like feeling better. My teeth was still hurting. I almost had to go to the emergency room with no insurance. So when I was in court, I don't know. I was just wasn't feeling good. I was hot and I took my jacket off and then I just threw up. And then he said, do you want to have another court date? And I said, yes, please. So. They gave me another court date. And actually, the, the judge that I went to court with, he had, he said he knows the mechanic that fixed my car because he's a member of this community. So he asked if I want a different judge over the case. So I said, yeah, now it's a woman judge over the case. So hopefully all is well with this. And she just judged righteously because I got all the receipts. <sighs> So I've been having a lot of things to do. That's why I haven't able to write back the New York Judicial Complaint Division about that complaint. I sent y'all and y'all contact me back, told me it's confidential, but ain't no secrets because this is dealing with scriptures. God hate false witnesses and people that utter out lies. Read Proverbs. I'm going to read it for you. And this is why I had to stand up because they lied on me. They kidnapped me, put me in a hospital and injured me. They took my blood and everything. So this is like serious. They did some genocidal things to me. They did war crimes.
Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. I want to know everybody who's responsible, who took blood and put IVs in me and investigate them too and find out who made me weak because I can't lift weights the same way I used to lift weights. I got my weights right here. They put something in me that made me weaker. And I'm having like uh, so much trouble lifting weights, brothers and sisters. I never was this weak before I went in that hospital. They did something to me. So Proverbs chapter six, verse 16. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yeah, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands a lying tongue. Y'all lied and said I threatened somebody with a knife. Nobody pressed no charges. They don't have no evidence. I never threatened nobody with a knife. Just because I had a knife on me and I was yelling don't mean that y'all can make up a lie and get away with it. I'm standing up for what I know is truth. I'm proving my innocence. I'm not P. Diddy and hands that shed innocent blood. See, they shed my blood and I was innocent. See, these things the Lord hate and all of them should be losing a job for real. I don't want to press charges and go to court for a lawsuit. Take too long. I just want judgment and justice and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. They look before I even got took into the hospital one day, a cop from the town of Poughkeepsie lied on me and I went to go complain and the lieutenant name was L. Toth. He threatened to call an ambulance on me. I didn't go in there yelling or doing nothing that would make him even speak like that to me. All of this stuff be recorded on camera. That's why when I called the FBI, I reported all this to the FBI. I wanted them to investigate this, but they scared because they all want to cover up for each other. I don't know if y'all racist or what y'all practicing hate crimes or what y'all doing, but somebody need to stand up for the truth. This is wrong. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. I was innocent. I haven't committed no crime. I never injured nobody. And federal law says unless there's an injured party, there can be no sanction or penalty imposed on one because this constitutional right. I was telling them the whole time, this is a conspiracy. Y'all not supposed to be doing this. Let me go. Get me out of here. Even when I got in the hospital, I told them, y'all better take pictures, call the cops on them, record this. I'm kidnapped. I'm in here against my will. A heart that divides wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift and run into mischief. So that judge, Maria, in the, in the city of Poughkeepsie on Market Street, she signed a warrant. And this 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 never happened in the city of Poughkeepsie. She interfered and took jurisdiction over something that she wasn't supposed to take jurisdiction. This happened in the town of Poughkeepsie. They got their own judges. How are you a city judge? And this never happened. I what you, How you get in on this? And then they search me for guns? Like, for, seriously? Under what circumstance? Under a lie? Somebody better do something about this immediately. I command Jesus Christ, the same Holy Ghost, fire on every evil, wicked person that conspired to destroy my life. I was almost close to moving out at that time. Them two days took a lot away from me. Lost a lot of strength, lost a lot. I was so close, I had over $2,000 saved. I was ready to move out my mom's. A false witness that speaketh lies. And he that soweth discord among brethren. The Lord hates y'all. Y'all are abominations. Seven abominations the Lord hates. These six things doth the Lord hate. Not me, the Lord. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. Y'all will be rewarded for your unjust iniquities don't worry how about you invite me on live and we talk that's what i just said email me f f tab my mood we gonna talk are you talking to indians indians ain't create nothing ain't no indians was no inventors of no land. God created the heavens and the earth. So how can Indians claim that they own all this land? You get what I'm saying? It's a misrepresentation of the word of God.
It said God created the heavens and the earth. How can you own what God created? Do any man own the Bible? See, it get dangerous when you come against the truth. We can't do nothing against the truth, only for the truth. How about when every Indian family die and go back into the dust? They not going to own nothing no more. So how you own something that you're going to die and it's going to be transferred and passed on to somebody that's not an Indian. You don't own nothing. Don't none of us own nothing. This is why God told us don't store our treasures in earthly places where thieves break through and, and steal. But store your treasures in heavenly places for where your treasures is there where your heart be also. My heart ain't even in this earth. That's why I don't mind not working and sacrificing my car insurance due tomorrow. I just got five extra dollars after I pay my car insurance. I might, if I'm lucky, have five extra dollars in my account. I'm not even worrying about it. Because I'm not friends of this world. I know as soon as I try to work and do two orders, cars going to start driving like it's, like it's, like it's an emergency. And they got somebody shot in the back of their car and I'm just going too slow. I, I don't like this world. I'm not friends with this world. God called me out of this world. This is why you see I'm being monitored, stalked. They told us the real true prophets are hated. Not like these false churches that everybody go to and clap and act like they all happy. That ain't no church of God. You, we, what's church that you see that wasn't persecuted in the Bible? Y'all want to play these games. I'm being persecuted the same way my brothers was being persecuted in the book of Acts. It's just a little spiritual, more spiritual now. They, but it's still physical. If y'all ain't get took to the hospital and called crazy, don't, you ain't really been preaching like that. I've been out in the streets yelling too much. So they gathered up amongst each other and said evil things and tried to plan my downfall. But God lifted me back up. I've been humble. All this stuff recorded, a lot of this stuff on the Internet, I'm rebuking people, everything. I've been out in the streets preaching, stepping my foot on the ground, telling them, y'all stop playing this devilish music out here. This is holy ground right here. Every day I was down there preaching at the river where everybody come play their devilish gang, shoot them up, kill them up music. I'm standing up loud, screaming, bold. Man, I was fighting against death to for make people live. So, of course, they're going to hate what I'm doing. I make the murder rate drop when I start speaking and preaching the gospel. They hate that. Uh, you know how much money one of these small cities get for a murder case? They want people to murder each other. They don't want me preaching out here, making people see the truth. So they're going to attack me like I'm a criminal. Let the drug dealer sell drugs for eight months. Keep investigating them for eight months. They committing crimes, right? I'm not committing no crimes. Somebody that's preaching about God, y'all got all this time to stalk and follow, but the uh, y'all's doing drug investigation for eight months. These people be having guns and everything. Y'all ain't trying to do no justice. If I work for the police department, first time I catch somebody selling a crack, we arresting them. Ain't no investigate eight months for nothing. Y'all weak. The way y'all run government is weak. Y'all let criminals go. That ain't righteous. They ain't operating off the laws of God. When you go in the courtroom, they got the law book. They don't got the Bible. They even took down in God we trust in the High Park courtroom. They still got it up in the town of Poughkeepsie. It's sad that the, the court that do the most corrupt stuff, I have God and tr we trust in the back. But the cops that's just chill and relax, these High Park cops be chilling. They don't really bother me. It's small. It's a small little town out here, a village. This is where Franklin Delano Roosevelt home is, the president. They don't bother me. They know me. I've been here over 20 years. I think they actually respect me probably. So they probably was looking at me just now like, yo, what you doing, bro? You tripping. We came to get some knowledge. You over here flipping on us. We know you're doing preaching the good news. We came. To, I have bad days every day. I'm a cop. I came to get the good news. Why are you leaving? Like they looking at me like, yo, you crazy. 
I should have stayed here. I should have preached the gospel to him. Like when I was in Poughkeepsie, I walked up on the cops and asked him, do you know about Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the Bible? He tried to act like he was an atheist and I had to show him, man, even if you lie and say you don't believe in God, if somebody's still, you're going to go arrest them, right? Okay, then you believe in God's laws. You upholding God's laws. You fake too because you just lied. And once you catch people on camera and you breaking them down like this, don't nobody like that. They don't nobody like that. They in their official capacity. They got their badge on and you making them look like a liar. You see? Now they got to try to come after you and do something to you. Let's play tick for tat. No, it ain't no tick for tat. I just showed you that you believe in God. I don't care if you're an atheist or not. If you, don't, if you say you're an atheist or a satanic worshiper and you claim you don't believe in God, so you think it's okay for people to steal from you? You're going to say no. Okay, well, Moses said thou shalt not steal in the Ten Commandments. See? You believe in God. See, even an atheist can see what I'm saying is the truth. This is why a lot of y'all love me because y'all see, I'm not holding back for nothing. I'm not being fake. And I, I ask for forgiveness when I slip up and make a little sin. The pastors that y'all been used to, they know how to hide they sins. So they only preach for a few hours on Sunday. Then when they go home, they go straight to sinning. But you don't see all that. I'm coming up seven days a week to show y'all, this is who I am. This is what you're going to get. I'm always going to be bold. I'm always going to be loud. Uh, this is what a pre how type of I preach. They said they was preaching bold. They said, be strong in the Lord. You go to them churches where they act like it's a seminary school. This ain't that. This ain't seminary school. I'm not looking to get tested and get passed a test from a man. If you're going to give me your church, let me come in there and preach the gospel. That's it. Other than that, we ain't got no, what we talking about? Jah, rise, Yahweh, Yahashua, live, more fire, fire. I pray the Father keep you going strong, brother. Lava, earthquake, brimstone, and fire. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Crying in the wilderness. I'm doing the same thing John the Baptist did, telling everybody to repent. The Muslims, the Freemasons, the government, the FBI in New York, whoever. It don't matter. It's up for all y'all. I don't got no um respect for persons. My God is not a respecter of persons. Put your badge up on the line and debate me on live. Let's go on Instagram. Mr. Officer Deep State. Officer Deep State. <laughs> Officer Deep State USA. Don't make me start giving Vladimir Putin some war strategies. Y'all keep playing with me. I don't have no respect to a person. I hope the hackers hack all the corrupt people that's, that's, um, targeting people unlawfully in the government how about the hackers when they hack y'all next time they need to hack all the gang stalkers inside of our government that's targeting innocent people how about that yeah 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 this government is corrupt them cops be cussing and drinking and going to the bar man they ain't righteous You be catching these cops like that cop out in Highland, Highland, New York, right across the bridge from me. He got indicted by the feds. What he was doing, he was protecting the SEX trafficking organization. Not one, but two of them. One of them name was the Hernandez organization. He got caught up in Brewster, New York, gave him 20 years in the feds. He was doing bad things to little Mexican girls. He should have been arresting the criminals, but instead he's protecting the criminals and doing bad things to these people that's being trafficked. Y'all don't want to talk about the truth. See, ain't nothing that I won't talk about. That's why y'all can't hold. The, you know the wind blow and you can't tell what direction it's coming from. That's how it is for those that are born in the spirit. We arresting devils in the spirit right now. Stay strong, King. It's literally liberty all day, every day. But all glory be to God, because I can't stay strong on my own. 
It's only the word of God that makes me strong. If I was up here just speaking how I feel and what I want, this wouldn't move nobody. But because I'm speaking the words of God and standing on God's word, this is how people can see. Man, we fighting against devils that carry guns and sell drugs and people that traffic children. I'm not up here being playing no games. People dying right now. This is serious. Your pastor too weak. I hope this reached somebody's soul and stopped them. Because some of y'all are the devils that I'm talking about watching this. This is war. When somebody in war, do they play around? No. I'm not laughing up. I'm, I laugh to get away from crying sometimes. Psalms one Psalms 100 and verse 3. So Psalms 100 and verse 3. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. So your mom didn't make you. The Lord made you. You go to Psalms 103. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. Your mom and your dad ain't make you. God made you. My mom told me, say happy Father's Day for your dad, to your dad, you know, if it wasn't for him, you wouldn't be born. I told her if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be born. I said, but God, look, I said, God said, don't call no man father on the face of this earth. That disturbed the demons inside of her. You know, my mom worldly, she celebrate all the pagan holidays. So then I text my dad. I said, you know have a good day or something like that. And then I sent them the scriptures. Don't call no man father on the face of this earth. Now my dad, a Christian, he didn't go to church and everything. So he was like, he received it. And he was like, I see you learning some things and we, sh we should talk soon and stuff like that. So Psalms chapter 100, verse three. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. You got Philippians chapter two, verse 10 through 11. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. I ain't never know somebody that cry and you can't hear them. Do it say screaming in the wilderness or crying in the wilderness? I got to find um, Philippians real quick. Hold on. I should have been able to get to Philippians real quick, but I'm here. So you got Philippians chapter 2, verse 10 through 11. It says... That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. No, at the name of Muhammad. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. No, Elijah Muhammad. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. No, what about Clarence the 13th X, nations of gods and earth, calling themselves gods. Kanye said he think he God. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. See, I'm the, the I'm showing you the word of God is true. The devil wants you to think that at the name of Muhammad, every knee should bow, but it don't say that. It say that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So Muhammad knew these holy laws and he took it and twisted it and corrupted it. Shame on him. Sh shame, shame on Muhammad for twisting these holy spiritual laws. Who turned the truth of God into a lie? Who turned the spirit of God into a devil? Muhammad did. Who turned the spirit of God into a pervert messing around with Aisha? Muhammad, Matthew chapter one, verse 23. 
behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. So his name ain't Elijah. His name ain't Buddha. His name is not Farrakhan or anybody who y'all believe in, Freemasons, whoever. His name is Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. No, Jesus is the son of God, which is being interpreted God with us. I and my father are one. Make these scriptures come alive. Malachi chapter two, verse 10. When I read these scriptures, it's like you see Paul and, and, and Peter really in real life when I'm reading it. That's how I feel when you listening. I know it got to feel like you living in the Bible times. Malachi chapter two, verse 10. They say, let this mind be in you that's in Christ. Malachi chapter two, verse 10 says, have we not all one father? Hate not one God created us. Why do we deal treacherously every man against his brother by profaning the covenant of our fathers? So this was the warning. Well, this was Judas treacherous, treacherous dealings that they talked about in Malachi. And it's letting you know God created us. So your mother and your father didn't create you because God created them. They didn't create themselves. And they're not going to live forever, but the word of God will live forever. So let's go into James chapter one, verse 17. It say, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So we know that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. So you got John chapter 14 and verse 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. See, it lets you know the comforter will come and it's going to teach you all things. So if this dude saying that he want to speak to me, you can email me, brother. I told you we go live on Instagram and we could talk about anything you want in this word of God, King James Version. Make sure you got the King James Version. And then you bring out your, when I'm done with you, you're going to want to burn the Quran. Hit the like button, y'all. Send this out to at least 10 Muslims if you're watching this. I guarantee you when I'm done with you, you're going to want to burn the Quran. Hey, Bakrim, if you feel like this way about my channel, email me right now and we're going to go on Instagram and I want you to prove everything you're saying. Until then, if you feel like that, you be on time out for 24 hours, brother. You don't have to disturb nobody in this channel because God is word is true and every man is a liar. And I'm not speaking my own words, but I'm speaking the father words. So say what you want. I'm done with the toxic Islam. Yeah, after this topic, the Muslims, they should stop celebrating Ramadan after today. This should be like a, 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 a huge impact across the world with these teachings that I'm teaching today. This stuff should shake up the world today. This going to be impactful. Watch. 
This channel is straight facts. Tell them, Topper. It's literally, liter literally Libby. Amen. Peace be unto you, sis. Now, I blocked that dude, man. He... He probably, he probably was going to post some more stuff in the comment section, but man, if you feel like that, you've been on my channel the past three days, just going in in the comment section. Email me, brother. We could talk face to face. Why are you so scared? If somebody, you feel somebody you disagree, prove it wrong. We ain't going to go back and forth in the comments. Email me. And you're judging people like you're not supposed to. Show me in the Bible where it say, don't judge people. I'm going to give you three scriptures. Don't you know that the saints will judge the world? And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin. See? And judgment. Because in the prince of this world is judged. And it say you will sit on the 12th throne. You will sit on the throne judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. So we can judge, just not according to appearance. It has to be righteous judgment. Abdul, Ab Abdul Ahi Muhammad. He said, Muhammad and Jesus are messengers. Peace be upon them. Wait, hold it. Stop right there. Jesus is not a messenger. Muhammad might have been a messenger. He wasn't no prophet. We know that. So thank you. We hearing it from a Muslim's mouth. Muhammad was not a prophet. He was just a messenger. He was like a warner, right? So he going to call himself the last prophet in the seal of the prophets or something like that. Did God say that it was going to be one more prophet and that's it? Then he said, your sons and your daughters will dream dreams and visions. So what is Muhammad talking about? He make the word of God look like it's of none effect. That's why I say he's just a messenger, a messenger that got the wrong message. You know how you have 30 people in the room and you tell somebody a secret in their ear and then they tell the next person and then they go tell the next person. By the time that secret get to the 30th person, it's going to be saying something different. The first person you said, Muhammad is a false prophet. The next person go tell the next person Muhammad is a false prophet. By the time they get to the 30th person, they're going to say Muhammad is God. Muhammad is a prophet of God. So he was a messenger that took the wrong messages and corrupted them. And that's what he did. That's you. I just gave you a perfect example. It say be ye perfect. Therefore, as your father is perfect, the way how I'm preaching is perfect. Sorcery and, and witchcraft is how they redesign the word thank you evelyn ivy that's what they did ain't look ain't no ramadan mentioned in no bible the devil deceived you brother we're gonna go into luke chapter 3 verse 22 luke chapter 3 verse 22 see these cops got action they driving around with their lights on let them do their job i ain't trying to disturb them I, I, I hope, I'm sorry for even overreacting a little. It's just that I'm always been harassed and targeted. So I didn't had times when I was in the park and they done just pulled up their car parked right behind me. Like it was a long time ago, but still I, I be having flashbacks sometimes and I forgive, but it's hard to forget. We can forgive. It's like once you've been scarred and stabbed and them scars ain't going to just be removed that quick. You need time to heal. You might need to be in a new environment to, to heal from some of these scars. So it says in Luke chapter three, verse 22, it says, and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, which said, Thou art my beloved son, and thee I am well pleased. 
So they never, Muhammad knew about the Holy Ghost. He put it in the Quran. But ain't no Holy Ghost to send on nobody when they was baptized because Muhammad wasn't baptizing nobody. You never heard no voice came from heaven and said, thou art my beloved son and thee, I am well pleased. Muhammad never got no signals from heaven. Like one, watch, watch the signals all the Muslims get from heaven. When this video is over, every Muslim living in this generation is going to be forced to repent or just admit Muhammad was a false prophet. It's no other decision. We're not leaving y'all room to debate. I don't want to talk to your imam unless you're going to say Jesus Christ is God. You're going to repent and say Muhammad was a liar. He was a false prophet because after this teaching, Y'all shouldn't have no reason to believe in a book that came after the holy book, the book of prophecy, and believe that that book represents Jesus Christ. And they call him just a prophet when he was called God in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. I'm showing y'all with the holiest of holiest books that Muhammad said he believed in, that he does not believe in it. Because they called him the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. This is why Muhammad said Islam represents peace. Whoever submits to the will of God is a Muslim, they say, because Muhammad knew that Jesus was the Prince of Peace, but he didn't represent peace. He represented war. Thank you, Topper. Muhammad is not a messenger of the Most High. He is a false prophet who followed a devil that that um that monk. We even got the monk name for y'all that Muhammad was following. I thought it was a Catholic monk, but it was somebody that he was calling himself a certain type of name. And we got it all. So y'all can't get away from this. There's no getting around this. I screenshot it, took pictures, made a video. I, I ain't, I'm not playing. So those thousand years of years before Christ, right? That was just practice time for sending people to hell. See, we're not in the days of Muhammad where we need a messenger. Our voice is the messenger. We press button on YouTube and go live and people all the way in Beijing and Bangkok and Ubikistan is hearing these messages. The Muslims is hearing this. The Muslims that's standing on that rock of Gibraltar right now is hearing these messages, brothers and sisters. They standing on a rock thinking they're going to get salvation or it's going to bring them closer to God. They said every Muslim that lives in this world has to go one time, at least one time to um see that rock. I don't know if it's in Saudi Arabia or where, Morocco or where, the rock of Gibraltar or this rock that y'all believe in. When y'all take y'all pilgrimage and take y'all hajj or whatever y'all call it, y'all all go to see that rock. That rock ain't nothing special about that rock. That rock ain't more important than this rock right here. I guarantee you it's not. I could prove that too with the scriptures. It say God created all things. Who is Muhammad to tell y'all to worship a rock? That's a graven image. That's 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 worshiping graven image. Stop playing with us. See, we got too much scriptures to beat y'all beat y'all up with. So those thousands of years before Christ, right? That was just practice time. For sending people to hell. I don't get what you're saying. The thousands of years before Christ was the prophets and Moses and their disciples. And we learned the law. And we learned how through the law, no flesh was justified. But all were guilty before God. So we learned a lot through the law. We're not keeping them laws. We saved under grace. But... You said, which God dies and pays a price to begin with? The character of Muhammad didn't even exist. Whoa. Brother L L Lero Barnes 10 said, the character of Muhammad didn't even exist. So what you saying? He wasn't a real man or something like that? You saying Muhammad is a made up like Dr. Seuss, green eggs and ham? Like that type of prophet? What are you trying to say, brother? Because I don't think that I believe there was a man named Muhammad that created Islam. I believe that. 
but the way you saying it is like the character Muhammad didn't even didn't even exist. So I don't get it. There was a man. People know him. They testified. People followed him. He was a real man, brother. He existed. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. How can you keep the first great commandment and love the Lord and love God with all your heart? If you fall in for a different doctrine, this man telling you, this is the way how to get connections with God. This is how we worship. This is how we pray. Like nobody told him to do all that stuff. Did any other, he said he believed in Moses, right? Did Moses pray five times a day? Did Moses make up certain names for his prayers? See, Islam is a religion, but nobody want to say that. The Bible was a real book that was written about prophets, men of God, holy prophets, and it was inspired by God. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. The Quran is not given by the inspiration of God. It's only Muhammad that wrote it. So how is it inspired by God? He wasn't no prophet. We already proved that this whole video. So y'all don't got no other people to lean on. That's why it's dangerous when you exalt yourself higher than the knowledge of God. Nobody else confirmed this stuff. He sent people out to go to war. He was like a leader of a military crew. He was doing a lot of things that wasn't godly, brothers and sisters. Now, he created a new religion and said, I'm doing this because this is the way that I feel. He didn't follow none of the old prophets or prophesy the stuff that they, he spoke it lies. Ronald Eteni, Veronica Queen, there's only one judge and he's El Shaha El Shad Shahadia, we are all living on borrowed time. That's true. A cloven beast. I say use nice words in the chat, man. Be respectful. If you can't say nothing biblical and the stuff I'm saying is hurting your heart too much, that you want to use worldly words. The Bible never talk about people having schizophrenia or nothing like that. It talk about unclean spirits. Everybody got unclean spirits that can tempt them or maybe possess them. If you know how to call on the Lord and pray and fast, when them spirits, them unclean spirits come to tempt you, whether it's the spirit of lust, the spirit of um, murder, the spirit of lies, the spirit of... the. Uh, Stealing whatever spirit comes inside of you, unclean spirit. If you got God, you know how to cast down them imaginations. Go into your word, pray, fast, worship, and they leave. But when you believe in stuff that's not in the word of God, like schizophrenia, you saying stuff that's manly. And God said there's a way that seems right to man. But the end and thereof are the ways of death. It also says man's wisdom is foolishness unto God. So if you don't see the word schizophrenia in the Bible, why would you say schizophrenia is my religion? You're making a mockery of something that's holy and righteous. If we was in the Old Testament days, you would have been stoned to death, brother. Because what you're doing is basically making a mockery of the religion that people follow. And the Bible would say, if a man, if a man don't do certain things, then his religion is in vain. It's a pure religion undefiled before God is checking on the widows and the fatherless and keeping himself unspotted from the world. So you try to make little slick remarks. It just shows that th this channel is not maybe for you. Maybe you need to sit back and just watch and learn as best as possible. Everything ain't for everybody. You leaving comments that's not edifying, it's not biblical. It's not even a respectful comment.
it's a mockery. It's being sarcastic and superstitious. So when you did this type of stuff around men of God, people who risk their lives and hazard their lives to preach this message, this wasn't taken as a game, as a joke. This will be looked at as you trying to exalt yourself higher than the knowledge of God. What can you teach? What can you teach besides stuff that God didn't say? You already come across with something that you disagree with, but it's not biblical. You're not disagreeing from a biblical aspect. I disagree because God said this and you're doing this. A righteous man falls seven times and get back up. You fall and you never got up. So, cause you're not righteous. See, every tongue that rise up against you in judgment, you shall condemn. You can't say nothing about me, but you can get put on timeout for 30 minutes this time. See, I'm strict today. 30 minutes this time. We not playing with y'all. See, we gotta cast out everybody who's gonna be mocking and worshiping false gods and idolatry and star witchcraft. You telling people to go stargazing and stuff like that. Sun gazing. You talking about believing a sun god and stuff like that. We casting y'all out. So I'm sorry, y'all. The stuff that I told y'all yesterday about this case that is one of the biggest cases in the United States and it's been going on for three years. I wasn't supposed to tell y'all about that. It's a whistleblower case. But forgive me. I wasn't supposed to say nothing. But this is what the dude said. It's a whistleblower case. So you can't find the documents. But he sent it to me. And I am i don't think I want to open up that. If y'all interested in that, i copy and paste that link. And you can open it up. Tell me what it say. But I'm, I'm a little nervous about opening that. Now he told me it's a whistleblower case. I'm... I almost want to delete the email, but you know what I'm saying? I, I It's like, if it's true, the Bible already tells us about how we are new creatures. So when he said about reincarnation and they doing a study and all this stuff, it just, I don't know what's the whole purpose of it, but he did write a lot of details in the message that I can't remember. So. Oh, Jason Mitchell says, even some of the cities in the Quran don't even exist. You hear that? So Muhammad told y'all to go worship a little rock like that. But he made up cities that wasn't real. So what make you think that rock that y'all worship is real? If Muhammad made up cities in the Quran that don't even exist. Look. See, the, the thing about research is when you look up the cities in the Bible, you can see these places existed at one time. But when you look up stuff in the Quran, if it never existed, it'll show that it never existed. That's how you know Satan was telling Muhammad that stuff. If that's true, what the brother just said, Jason Mitchell, he said, I was just looking into that. And that seems to be the case. Even some of the cities in the Quran don't even exist. See? So if that's true, then you know. The, the, if some of the cities don't exist, how can you take anything else as truth in that Quran? He already told y'all, y'all can steal or lie to unbelievers or something like that. Steal or lie. I can't remember which one it is. Y'all know why they ain't putting the Sora up in here. Because they know I'm speaking truth. They know the Holy Spirit is using me. Deuteronomy 18 and 18. Let's go there. Deuteronomy 18 and 18, y'all. Deuteronomy 18 and 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee and will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. 
So Muhammad ain't no prophet among their brethren. He's from Saudi Arabia. They from Jerusalem. He said, I will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Muhammad didn't speak the words of God. He didn't speak all that God commanded. Muhammad didn't teach the Ten Commandments. He taught Moses. He said Moses' name, but he didn't say, I'm not going to commit adultery like Moses taught. How many wives he had? That's why a lot of black people and certain people, they want to be Muslims because they cheat on their wives and they want to feel not guilty. They don't want to feel like they're being condemned and convicted. I'm a Muslim. I changed my religion. So I'm not committing adultery because my religion allows me to have more than one wife. You still committing adultery and you will die and go to hell in your sins if you don't repent and turn from your wicked ways. Talking about I got a second wife. That's the devil straight out of the pits of hell. Y'all are corrupt men, corrupt women that cheat on your wives and lie on the government. How you giving government documents to people saying this is your wife and it's a lie? You giving this, this woman, this officer badge talking about it's your wife and it's a lie. You are corrupt. You lied on God and you lied on the government. These people are devils. And this stuff, I'm talking about my own family talking about this. My own household I'm speaking about. Yes. Is that real? I rebuked my own mom, told her adultery is evil. She need to repent. She told me my sisters committed adultery too. My sister's in the church and they, I ain't even going to say anything. Let me calm down. This is real, brother and sister. It's not no game. This caused division. The truth caused division. Everybody can't live this. Everybody not for the truth. Abdullah Muhammad. I'm going to put you in time out because you can't respect this chat. You can sit back and learn. If you got any disagreements or if you got any questions, you can email me. We talk on Instagram. I'm tired of y'all taking the plants that God made. God said the plants will be for our medicine. Give me that scripture where God said the plants will be for our medicine. The herbs. Y'all not going to take what God made and put in his word and said the herbs of the field will be for medicine for us. And y'all going to call it something that is not a worldly name that they use to arrest people. I will not let y'all corrupt my father's word. It said the herbs of the field will be for medicine. Say, take a little wine from time to time for your infirmities. They don't say get drunk, though. Say, be sober and, and, and diligent. You don't know if somebody is cold, they might react like they, they not sober. If you cold, you, you shivering, you can't even move right. If I was preaching and it was 19 degrees out here, I wouldn't be able to preach the way I'm preaching right now. I'll be cold. My spirit will like, you get what I'm saying? My blood will be not hot. It's 42 degrees. I feel beautiful. I got my shirt off. I'm not cold at all. I do got the heat on 76. But it feel beautiful out here. Compared to other days, it should be warmer than this, being that we in the spring. But I accept it. It's God doing everything so i can't complain and i'm not testing god i'll let him do what he do let it let his will be done not my will if he wanted to snow tomorrow he'll let it snow tomorrow i can't do nothing but respect it jesus never said to worship him the higher i'm about to teach now now let's cook let's cook y'all turn up the stove on high now let's go turn up the stove on high y'all ready let's go let's go to work jesus never said to worship him that's right but in exodus it say only worship god right 
But when Jesus was born, the three wise men followed the stars in the sky. They said, where's the baby? We came to worship him. When he was born, they worshiped him. They brought gifts, incense, frankincense, and myrrh. Huh? Yeah. He never said to worship him, but Isaiah chapter nine, verse six says, for unto us, a son is born, unto us, a child is given and the government shall be upon his shoulders and his name shall be called wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. Hallelujah. Told you we teaching, we cooking. Come on, bring them, bring them. When you ask a righteous question, you get a righteous answer. When you come disrespectful, you're going to get cast out, cast out the temple. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto the words which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. They watching now. <laughs> All right, how about this? The creator is David's Lord. Yeah, that creator is Jesus Christ. GWAP, you teaching, brother. Preach, GWAP. GWAP in here talking in parables like Jesus. He said, no. He think he disagreeing, but he really teaching and leaving me room to, to preach more. No. The creator is David's Lord. That's right, brother. David called him Lord. They said, if, if he's younger than David, how did David call him Lord? Saying, sit down on my right hand while I make thy enemies thy footstool. I'm going to hit you with scripture after scripture after scripture. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. I love it. I love it. He thought he was proving something wrong. Gave me another opportunity to tear him up. Jesus Christ is the everlasting father. Amen. The Muslims can't quote scriptures. They only come and say, Muhammad was better than Jesus. They only say what they feel. And I told them, if Muhammad quoted the Bible and he said, that God talked to Moses and God talked to Jesus, then who told him to create the Quran? God ain't tell him that. Because God ain't tell Moses to write no Torah. It was written by um, other people after they died. See, Muhammad wrote the Quran himself. That's the difference. Them scriptures, was them scriptures from Moses were written on stone tablets. What are y'all talking about? See? It's no historical evidence to prove that Muhammad was a true prophet of God. They only got mosques. It's no museums glorifying Muhammad. He ain't in the Library of Congress or nothing like that. What y'all talking about? Them Muslim people was missionaries. They wasn't no prophets. They was missionaries. That's who Muhammad was. A military dude. He wasn't no prophet, brothers and sisters. The government was on Jesus' shoulders. He was humble, took on a form of a servant. He was holy. He didn't order no wars and stuff like that. Jesus never said to worship him. He never did the hire, but it was done. And they prophesied him Isaiah chapter nine, verse six. So whether he said it or not, when he started doing all them miracles, they said, my Lord and my God, when they seen how many miracles he was doing, People came up to him and started worshiping him. They said, Lord, make me whole. He said, it's not it's not meat to give what's holy to dogs. She said, yeah, but even the dogs eat the crumbs off the table, off the master's table. He said this because your faith, you are made whole. See, they was running to him because they knew he kept doing all these miracles and they wanted to be made whole. And sometimes he would see people and feel sorry for him, like the dude that wanted to get in the pool. He had an infirmity like 50 or a long time. And it was a pool that every time somebody get in the pool, an angel came and withered the water. Every time somebody get in the pool, they was made whole of whatever infirmity they had. So this man wanted to get in the pool. Every time he wanted to get in, somebody had jumped down and take a spot. So Jesus just came, told him, behold, you're made whole. He was healing, doing many miracles. And his witnesses that testified and his witness their, their witnesses are true. Muhammad ain't do no miracles. He ain't baptize nobody and give nobody the Holy Spirit. He told y'all that he had the Holy Spirit, but ain't give it to nobody else. You see, he was sending people out to go do murders, but he claimed that he got the Holy Spirit and the angel Gabriel talked to him. That wasn't no angel talking to Muhammad in that cave. 
That was the devil talking to him. He was deceived. But let me see what else. We got numbers 21 and 8. Numbers 21 and 8. See, if I was here with the Hebrew Israelites and I had like five, ten people with me, nobody wouldn't feel so bold to come up and try to act like they intimidate me and stuff like that. Because they would see, man, these dudes is acting, they real militant. Now, they come up on them dudes too. They come up on them. But people would think twice about trying to come in and, and, and get, get all close and be all nosy and stuff. But I can't stop nobody. I'm in public. So I got to take everything as it come and deal with it uh, how, 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 how it get dealt with. When the spirit come on me, I don't know what's going to happen. How I'll react. Numbers 21 and 9. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. So this serpent of brass that was put on a pole, and if any man... That if a serpent had bitten any man when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. So this was the same type of power that Jesus had. Remember, in the apostles, he gave it to the apostles too. They said at the shadow of Peter passing by, some of them might be healed. Women was touching Jesus' garment being made whole. He said, who touched me? I felt a virtue go out of me. I never felt this. And she said, me. And he said, thy faith made you whole or something like that. But she she, she knew that she was made whole as soon as she touched him. And he said, who touched me? This was a feel that I, I, I never felt before or something like that, he said. And then the woman came and said it was me. See? Yeah, they want to steal the word of God and pretend like they the prophet. So when Moses sent that serpent and everybody had touched that pole, that was the same thing with Jesus Christ. Whoever he touched was made whole. And the same thing with that pool. Whoever got into that pool was made whole. The monument Jesus claimed he was God, he said, worship me. You gotta show me what scripture you're talking about. Prophecy fulfilled, John 3 and 13. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Amen. That's true. So we go into John 3 and 13. It say, And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the son of man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life there's that serpent that they was talking about if that serpent bit whoever uh they were made whole right so moses lift up that serpent whosoever that's how the son of man must even so the, must the son of man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. It don't say that whosoever let the Hebrew Israelites teach him about Jesus, they're going to have eternal life. That's what they want you to think with their heart that devours wicked imaginations. It say that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And should not mean that you still could perish. Remember, the road is narrow. So just because it says shall be saved don't mean you're going to be saved. You got to be hungry for this. You got to call on the Lord with all your heart and all your strength. You can't just say a prayer and use a vain repetition and think that he's going to answer them prayers. If you really want deliverance, you're going to work for it. You're going to fight for your deliverance. When God asked Jesus, if you... He told them to worship him. Jesus will say they are all liars. I told them to worship the father. So 
Jesus never told nobody to worship him. When he was born, they worshiped him. That's what I'm showing you. That proves that he was God. Because in Exodus, they say they were only supposed to worship God. These three wise men knew the law, brother. They knew that they were only supposed to worship God. They knew the commandments. Everybody knew them. So these three wise men was not Gentiles. They came to worship Jesus. They was from Jerusalem around Judea. See, y'all got to know y'all history. I know the Holy Spirit ain't leading me wrong. I don't got to read everything to know everything. Before that flag, 666, gay pride. Before that flag was a rainbow flag, Jesus Christ put the rainbow up in the sky. See, all men are corrupt. They take God's words and his symbols and twist them into what they heart that divides wicked imaginations wanted to mean. And as Moses lifted, all glory goes to God. Every day, all day, cat balls. I believe he died for our sins and rose again. Topper, that is a true statement. Let me see what else we got. I'm way up in the comments. I'm going all the way down. Randy, what's good? What's going on? Andy Roman, are you like 6'11"? Why would you say that? Because when I sit up in my seat, you don't never see nobody sit in their car with their head back like this and just drive like this. Everybody drive like this, right? I be God gave me peace. Before I was walking with Christ, I knew that, man, it's so uncomfortable driving like that. Try to drive like this sometimes. It feels so relaxing. Like it's stress. People go through so much stress driving like this. You don't know because your, your brain is just thinking about everything around you and you're not relaxed. You need to lay your head back and relax. That's one of the things they tell you when you take your driving test. Relax. Relax. That was not Elohim. He saw it was Christ. Your understanding is off. That's why so many cars that be so angry because they got stressed because they ain't even driving how they supposed to drive they got their head all up like this and stuff they stressed out they ain't even really they don't even really want to drive i get a headache driving like that i have to have my head back i'm teaching y'all a lot of things this will take away a lot of stress from y'all some of y'all try it trust me even if you gotta put a pillow up and and just to make it more comfortable for you try it try it trust me i guarantee y'all 90 percent of y'all drive with y'all head up randy am i okay why am i laughing like a madman man i'm speaking the truth and i'm up here enjoying destroying the works of the devil muhammad did the works of the devil not the will of god so i I was born to destroy the works of the devil. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious. They are ravenous wolves. By their fruit, you, you shall know them. You shall know them by their fruit. Let me see. I'm like one of them preachers that get them preaching. And I walk into the crowd and ask everybody their questions when I'm done and still record the whole teaching. This is the true church of God. This is how we move. Them churches that you see, that's <laughs> when everybody's in the cloud clapping, that nobody going through persecution. We didn't see that in the scriptures. Every church I read about in the Bible went through persecution. Stephen was stoned to death. Saul persecuted the churches and wasted them. Get what I'm saying? They ain't want to accept Saul. They still, he was like a traitor. This is like a Muslim. Saul was like a Pharisee. He was a, he was not like a Muslim. He was a Pharisee. They the ones who killed Jesus. The Gentiles ain't killed Jesus. When the Hebrew Israelites be preaching on street corner, they need to tell you, yeah, we the ones that killed Jesus. But we want to preach to you about them. I'd rather get preaching from the Gentiles because 
they don't have the spirit that killed Christ. If you claim that you a Hebrew Israelite, all them laws that they claim that they was keeping is why they wanted to kill Christ. We are free from that. I'm not going back into um, Egypt. Y'all go back into Egypt. You know what I'm saying? Hope you don't get lost in one of them pyramids and all that darkness. I'm free from Egypt. I had crystals all on my wrist. Going to court with Moroccan flags on me. I was in bondage for seven years. I'm free. I'm not running back to slavery. Like Kunta Kente, Toby. My name, this my name is a disciple of Jesus Christ. I'm not nobody's um property. You know what y'all thought? I, the devil don't own my child of God. My name changed. Jesus gave me a new name, like Apostle Paul. This is why you have to trust in the Lord. He'll change your name the same way he did for Apostle Paul. Give you a new name written in the book of life. Only the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, can reveal the mysteries, wisdom, and understanding of the only true God. You have to be born again and receive the Holy Spirit if you don't have God's Spirit. Yeah? And a lot of these people we watch, they don't have God's Spirit. They got the Spirit of error. A lot of these people, they don't even really want to preach against witchcraft. When it say Simon the sorcerer, he said he tried to buy the Holy Ghost. He offered them money. That's the same thing y'all do when you're past it. Look, it's sorcery. What's the difference between Simon the sorcerer seeing Paul laying hands on people and they catch the Holy Ghost? And he said, give me this power also that whoever I lay hands on catch the Holy Ghost. What's the difference between him saying, hey, hey, Paul. No, Peter, excuse me. Peter told him, your money perish with thee. Your heart is not right in this matter with God. You better pray that God forgive you of this wicked deed. So when Simon the sorcerer offered Peter money to say, can I buy the Holy Ghost? What's the difference between you going to church, paying tithes and offering, thinking God going to bless you? It's sorcery. See, I, I came to come strong like I don't know what y'all expect from me. I don't know what y'all think I was coming to do, but I came to glorify the Father to, to the fullest. And a lot of people not gonna like it because they were used to worshiping religiously only on Sunday. And they take them tithes and offerings and your pastor wearing suits to church. Y'all look like y'all are in car dealerships or something. Who told y'all to wear suits? There's nowhere in the word of God where it say you gotta dress like this for a pastor. We had suits before they even came. We had the word of God before they even started making suits. Y'all say, why does this matter? It's because they judge you according to the flesh on, if you see a preacher with Timberlands and jeans or whatever, you gonna judge them. Gonna say, you need to change your appearance. That's why I'm just gonna get the Jesus t-shirts. Not Jesus t-shirts, but some biblical t-shirts. I need to get me one of them Jesus Christ is God t-shirts. I was hoping somebody would buy me one, but I guess I don't got, uh, uh, I, I know I got some loyal supporters and I thank God for y'all, but people don't have it like that, I guess. And I, was, I understand. Them t-shirts is 40 bucks. That's, I wanted to sell for 25, 30, 35, so. All, all of the prophets had one message. Yeah, to lead you to God. Man, this phone, I mean, this car with this overheating. And it's, oh, wow, we on 1%, brothers and sisters. I got, it's either I end this live now or... It's going to cut off and I'm going to have to come back. Whatever happened, it's all glory to God. We're just going to figure it out. I'm about to go back to where I can go in the house and charge this phone. But I might stay in the car a couple minutes and let it charge if it cut off. But 
I be out here long suffering with y'all. We was on live for four hours. I preached for four hours to y'all. Three hours and 59 minutes and 44 seconds. We are gonna hit four hours. I sat up here preaching boldly. I got tempted. The devil sent out, um, you know, Satan sent out little monitoring spirits to try to tempt me. It didn't tempt me, it made me bolder. I got bold as a lion. When they started sending out little informants and stuff, I got bold. I'm like, man, I'm like, I'm the type of preacher, if you come in my church with your cop uniform, I'm coming up asking you all questions. Don't come in here trying to end like you about to do a police work. You, you best come in regular suits to just try to blend in. You, that's the wrong thing to do. I'm preaching and you parked right there. I know y'all wanted the gospel, but I didn't take it the right way. And I'm sorry, God, forgive me. Lord, have mercy on me because my heart was still hardened because I'm still dealing with a lot of trauma and betrayal and going through persecutions for stuff that was not true. Now they, you know, try to put my name out there and make it look like I'm an extreme, extreme risk and got me labeled as a, as like, you know what I'm saying? I should have went to court. They was telling me I don't have to go to court. I just signed the paperwork. But I should have went to court and asked the judge, man, how you, I, I wasn't thinking, my mind wasn't right. I was just being, be healing from coming out the hospital. So I didn't want to have no confrontation. I just said, man, I know I don't carry guns. Y'all can search or anything, all my property, go ahead. But it was a unlawful, illegal search. I should be compensated for that, but God compensated me now, so it's all good. God worked, God worked in ways that we would never believe. And I started to put all this stuff out on my Instagram, on my, yeah, I don't be hiding nothing, brothers and sisters. When I deal with adversity, I'm going head at the um, whoever. And that's why people know I'm not to be played with because I'm not going to be silent. If I got a problem, I'm going to speak and I'm going to put it out there. We ain't going to wrestle back and forth. I'm going to catch you and put you in a bad predicament. Like them security guards that followed me when I went to the college to, to work and drop off that delivery when I'm delivering these alcohol drinks to this girl. They seen me on camera working and delivering and they wouldn't even let me get off the college campus, but they want to have this black dude. That's why I don't believe in none of that. Oh, let's do this for our people. Are we all black? I don't believe in none of that stuff. It'd be our own people that be trying to hurt us. He running up on me all fast. I had to take, pull over, let him get in front of me so I can get what number security um this is and document him, add him to my list. Y'all are wicked up in that college. And I, and I type, they need to be investigated. They ain't doing nothing but partying with them college students and doing the same thing y'all said Diddy was doing. They The same thing y'all accusing Diddy of, allegedly, that stuff really going on in that college. I really seen all them college students running with no clothes on. They do this every year. It's some type of evil satanic ritual they do. And when they graduate, they run around the campus with no clothes on. Like, that's evil. Men and women, just, I guess it's nasty, man. Sick. Man distorts true words. Yeah, Kalia. Demons rise from graves. That's why we sent them. We snatched their souls from them and send it up to God. They on, they on demon time. They on devil time. We on angel time. So every devil that try to rise up from the pits of hell, we snatch their souls from them and send it up to God in Jesus' name. I guarantee you, it's going to be a lot of Muslims that's not going to celebrate Ramadan after this. So you know they're going to react and say bad things. All right, mixtape. Somebody said, I'm ducking your questions. The Bible says, contend for the faith and be always to give an answer to anyone who asks you. So, let's go. He says, I'm ducking this. Somebody said, he's ducking my questions. He's ducking your questions, mixtape. 
first off, you said, John said, I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved, 32, 30. Then John says, no man hates seeing God at any time. Let's see. John 32 and 30. And then you said John 1 and 18. Let's start at John 1 and 18 first. Make it easier. John 1 and 18 says, No man hath seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. So this is the beginning when they never seen Jesus. Remember, John baptized Jesus. So he's telling you in the beginning was the word and then John's witness of Christ. Um, and then it talks about when Jesus came. So John baptized Jesus. So he's telling you his witness from the beginning how John bear witness of him. I'm in 1 John chapter 15. So not 1 John, John chapter 1 verse 15. It says, John bear witness of him and cries saying, this was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me for he was before me. And of his fullness have we all received and grace for grace for the law was given by Moses. So when he say no man never seen God at any time, the only begotten son, He's talking about no man ever seen God in the flesh. That's what he's talking about. The only begotten son. So he's talking about he, a lot of them old prophets of the Old Testament never seen God. And this was the beginning. So remember, John was the one who was crying in the wilderness. He baptized Jesus. So nobody seen God. They never knew Jesus was the Messiah before he was baptized. Did not believe Jesus Christ was a prophet. I just showed and proved it to y'all. I answered as many questions as I can answer. And I'm not done. We're going to come back. I just want to give a little bit of charge on his phone. So. I'm going to finish answering this question real quick said John 1 and 18 then he had John 32 and 30 and then after this I'm gonna come right back for y'all John there's no such thing as John 32 and 30 brother but Uh, yeah, you got to get the scriptures right. There's no John 32 and 30. Great study. Thank you, Jimmy Hassel. Love you all. May peace be unto you. I'll see y'all back in a little. Jesus Christ will be back soon. Nobody knows the day or the hour, but we know we are in the last days. All right, peace be unto you. All glory be to God. I'll see you on the field.